Jets have given CJ Mosley a new contract. Joe Douglas not asleep at the wheel this morning, making some moves early on day two of free agency. I'm excited to get into it with you guys, figure out what exactly this money could be used for. Are we going to use it on something else or is this more freeing up of space from a contract that was otherwise going to be a little detrimental? CJ's cap hit was set to be like $21 million. Crazy, crazy contract. Now they rework his deal. It's a whole new deal. They ripped up the old one. Per U Stadium and I think it was Field Yates was the was the first one that I saw tweet this out. But um ripped up the old contract for linebacker CJ Mosley, gave him a new two-year $17.25 million deal with $13.25 million guaranteed. This includes $9 million guaranteed for 2024. If the math adds up, the Jets should have around $13 million in cap space this year. So the Jets are freeing up some space based on what his contract was going to be. And I love this. This is aligning CJ Mosley up with Aaron Rodgers' perceived two-year window that we're kind of going all in for right now. And I think you'll see a lot of these contracts align in similar fashions. You saw Morstead's contract align with two years, Zerline's contract align with two years. You saw John Simpson's contract align with two years. You saw Tyrod Taylor's contract align with two years. You saw uh, the, the, well, I guess Kinlaw's one year. But there's a lot of a lot of potential here for the New York Jets, and I think it is going to be a two-year window is what they're going to try and dial in on with Aaron Rodgers, and I would expect whatever player they bring in, you know, receiver, I guess I could see being a longer-term deal. But if they go after, like, maybe a Curtis Samuel or a DJ Shark, not that I think DJ Shark's deserving of a two-year deal, but I think every contract is going to align in that similar capacity where it's you know, try to keep this core together as long as possible for two years. I would bet if there is a DJ Reed restructuring, we will see that as a two-year deal. Conklin, I would say the same thing with, I think that th those could possibly be done with, uh, you know, maybe after the draft, depending on how much cap space you need to make some moves in inside. But are we on the cusp of a potential big move from the New York Jets. Are we going to try and make a big time trade for a wide receiver? Are we looking for a left tackle? Is this just money to free up space to get either one of those positions via free agency? What do you guys want to do towards the draft? I'm really excited to hear what y'all have to say. Let's see. JT says, I hope it's T Higgins. I love me some T Higgins. I think he's going to be a little bit more expensive than I want to uh, spend money on. I'm going to have a video coming out of the top trade down options and T Higgins could potentially be one of those uh, options. So we'll, we'll talk about that when I make that video. Shane comes in. I think some of Mosley's money is to pay for deals already made the other day. A chunk of those haven't hit the cap yet. Yeah, I, I think when I was looking at over the cap, it was, let's see. I know they had Kinlaw's contract in there, but I don't think Simpson's contract was listed yet. And I don't think, I mean, Moses, we know what his contract is. I just don't know if they moved his money over yet. No, it doesn't look like over the cap. Oh no, Murray Moses is accounted for, for over the cap for the Jets right now. So right now the Jets are sitting at $12 million before the CJ Mosley restructure but that does not include it. I believe it does not include uh, Zerline or Morstead. I don't see either one on here. Oh no, Zerline's on there. So Zerline is accounted for. Where is Morstead? I guess Morstead. Morstead probably is not accounted for in this figure yet. Yeah, it looks like Morstead, John Simpson, and Tyrod Taylor are not accounted for in these moves. So I would think that may have netted down from our $12 million that we had. So if this is $13 million in cap space that gets freed up, then the Jets are probably sitting at about that. So you're, you're probably right. This is definitely uh, kind of clearing some cap that we have already committed to to give us some more flexibility as well. Like, I do think we're going to have cap space left over here. Like, the, the contracts that Tyrod and John Simpson signed, 
I don't believe those contracts are actually going to be for those specific cap hits. And I would bet Kinlaw probably is not hitting all for that one. Uh, I could see them adding void years to similar to the Jefferson contract from last year. Uh, Raul, Raul says, Curtis Samuel, got to go out and sign him. Fear is grim. Well, we do a first, or will we do a first round pick swap with the Bengals to give up a future second uh, and give up a future second and there's, and this year's third for T. Uh, I would do a pick swap with the Bengals, but I don't want to give up a whole crazy ton to them because if we're sliding back from 10 to 18, that should be the difference. That's a second round pick right there. So I would say I would give up a second round pick for T Higgins if I'm giving him a monster contract. So I'm down with the trade down to get T Higgins, but just not giving up additional picks beyond that. Uh, I think that would be a, a little bit of an overpay. Alex W says, Tyler Boyd is who we should get. I would love to see a Boyd signing. If, the, if Douglas can get a Boyd signing done today, I'd be feeling really confident heading into the draft. Really, really confident. I don't know why Frank is upset. He says, Boyd's best days are behind him. What makes you say that? What's, what's, what's the indicator there? Matthew says, Higgins is linking to the Patriots, I've heard. That doesn't surprise me at all. They have so much money. They were just going after Calvin Ridley. They're going to be a little sore that they didn't get that contract done. And they're, if they're taking a quarterback at the top of this draft, they're no longer, uh, they don't have a weapon. They got to get a weapon. Yodel says, we got the money. Go spend it. Big splash wide receiver to help Garrett. Maybe it's for a Mike Williams. Maybe that's what we're looking for. Re love Yolution now says, would love to sign Mike Williams and sign a left tackle. I definitely want to lean the left tackle route. Mike Williams, I just don't want to give him a big, big contract. Like if he's getting around $13 million a year, I don't know. I guess it depends how it's structured. How much guaranteed money are you giving out? I like the contested catch ball from Mike Williams. I do. I feel like the Jets should go after a cheap weapon though in, uh, in free agency now and then a expensive tackle and then draft an expensive weapon in the draft. Justin says, if we trade for a legit number two wide receiver, I'll be more okay taking that tight end. Still prefer uh, prefer with a trade down. Yeah, I'm I'm team trade down for pick 10, unless Joe Walt is there. That's, that's where I'm at right now. McNally says, crazy season. Mosley had to be, to be fair, because last season he was bang average second half of the season. Uh, couldn't run. He definitely gave up a few bigger plays than we were accustomed to, but he still had a really good season. So I, I like aligning him here. Him and uh, Quincy are a linebacker tandem that you just don't want to have to break up. Keep him for the next two years. Don't don't screw around with this defense. This is Super Bowl caliber defense. Just play around with the offense here. Nick Dow says, I'm so sick of having O-line issues where even the Jets, uh, even if the Jets signed Bakhtiari or Smith, I wouldn't be mad if we still drafted another offensive lineman at 10. I wouldn't be mad if we took an offensive lineman at 10. I just would prefer any type of trade down, even if it nets us a third, to take an offensive lineman a little bit later. There's a lot of good offensive linemen, and I think I prefer the extra draft pick than anything else. Sonny Ryan, does this help them with cap space? It does. It does free up about, it sounds like it frees up or the Jets are around 13 million according to this. But if he's getting 9 million this year and his cap hit, I think he was due 17 million. So it's probably a net gain of like 8 million if I had to guess for this year. Or maybe like less than that. Maybe it's like 5 million is what we gain. And then there's some incentives that still hit the cap for this season aside from the 9 million that's fully guaranteed. But this could also be signing bonus. So we don't really actually know how it's structured. But I would imagine we're going to get uh, some nice cap relief here. JT saying he agrees. McNally says a trade for Sutton. It doesn't sound like Sutton's going to get moved now. The Broncos have a bunch of cap space, so I don't think it's it's as necessary anymore. <laughs> Curly says everyone's going to be upset and annoyed when JD uses the cap space and savings on a uh, on a safety. I wouldn't hate it. If you're telling me you're restructuring this and you bring back an Ashton Davis and maybe like you get a low end like other receiver, I feel like you're spending your money all right. I wouldn't be upset with that. Alex W says, no draft capital. We need all we can get. I The only reason I would accept a T Higgins trade would be if it's 10 to 18. You're swapping down that way. I don't really want to give them a pick for a high priced wide receiver.
Yeah, Shane's saying, I don't think Tyrod's on over the cap yet. No, I haven't seen his contract pop through. Curly said, if Ridley got $92 million, what is Higgins going to want? Plus, you got to trade for him. No, not happening. So $25 million a year is what I'm expecting from, uh, from T. Higgins. That's a monster contract, an absolutely monster contract. I would not, uh, I don't particularly want to do this. As a free agent, I wouldn't have minded because uh, the Jets could still restructure a bunch of contracts and free up a bunch of space, so you could do it. But I like the drafting a weapon route a lot more. Jimmy DeCaro, hey Ryan, how you doing this morning? Oh, I got my coffee. I literally just was about to like sit on the couch and do a little editing and get some stuff ready, thought processes and things for some shows that we're doing later today. And then uh, this news broke, so I was like, gotta hop on, gotta talk a little bit to you guys. Uh, Revolutionary, I'd love to sign Mike Williams instead of giving up draft capital for Sutton. Uh, I like Sutton's contract. If you can get Mike Williams for a similar contract and not give anything up, then I think you have an argument. I just like Sutton's uh, health as well. Mike Williams, there's an in in inherent injury risk associated with him. Dustin, what's up, Ryan? This move really feels like a wide receiver move is coming. I hope so. Make me feel real good. That's what I feel like is missing in this free agency. That and a left tackle. Alex, swap first with Denver for Bowles. Sign Williams, then draft Bowers. Alex, I love that plan. If you can get Bowles from Denver in a trade down, free up $16 million worth of cap space for them. Now, I do think if they're going to wind up going with a quarterback, they're going to want that left tackle there. So I think any trade with Denver seems a little less likely right now. But I could be wrong. Famous Jay says, Boyd is going home to Pittsburgh. I've been saying that for a hot minute. I think that's going to happen. I think Boyd ends up going back home to Pittsburgh against his division rival, Cincinnati Bengals, and he wants to go play for Tomlin, so I think it just makes a crazy ton of sense there. Uh, Blitzcrew says, Boyd signing doesn't seem like JD's style. Mike Williams or Josh Reynolds or Curtis Samuel seem more JD. I really like Curtis Samuel's. Uh, Curtis Samuel. I guess that probably eliminates you a little bit from like that third round slot type receiver. I do want to try and bring in a, a, a Malik Washington. I really liked him uh, from what we've seen out of his highlights as our slot. So if I could get me a maybe a slightly bigger wide receiver on the cheaper, Mike Williams, Josh Reynolds would both be uh, interesting plays for us, I think. Yodel says this year's looking good, boys, so far. Wake up, Joe. <laughs> He's awake. We got it. Uh, King Blaze says, what's the new deal with Mosley? Mosley's two-year, $17.25 million deal, $13.25 million guaranteed, $9 million guaranteed this season. Meaning the Jets are locking in Mosley for the next two seasons while we go for the Super Bowl run. Mosley ripping up his contract. Love it. Love it, love it, love it. Famous Jay says, Mike Williams is a good wide receiver, number two. But Jets need to draft a wide receiver to guard against injury. So I feel like if you go with a Mike Williams on a short-term deal, I would look towards drafting a wide receiver in the third round. I think that would be a smart play. If you do that, then you could maybe get a Brendan Rice and you get someone that's a little bit healthier at a uh, at the position. So that's that would be my hope for that. King Blaze says, if big money, then go for a wide receiver who's been healthy. So I would rather spend big money on a tackle right now and draft our weapon at the top of the draft. Michael says, who else do the Jets need to restructure before more deals are done? They could do what's known as simple restructures. Over the Cap had a really cool article on this earlier in the offseason. And a, what a simple restructure is, is a restructure that does not need input from the player. The team can do it, and it's just moving numbers around on columns and spreadsheets and things like that to allocate cap hits differently. So the Jets don't have to necessarily have player input on restructures but they can restructure someone like a Conklin, a JFM, a Reed, uh, you know, some of those types of deals and free up a bunch more cap space. Now, obviously, we'd like to see them extended. I would like to see Reed's contract extended to cover a two-year window with Rodgers. The same thing with Conklin, same thing with JFM. I would love to lock these guys in for two more years on new contracts or minimal type uh, impact level deals. Now, obviously, I think Reed has earned a big payday. So if he wants to get paid, then maybe that one's a little bit trickier to figure out, but you could restructure some more deals. Um, but those would be the guys that I would look towards that I want to keep for the next two years uh, that I, I don't want to cut, obviously. 
Anthony says, I don't want to trade for a wide receiver. We need the assets. Higgins is interesting, but Ridley might have upped the price, and I don't want to overpay a wide receiver who is mainly a third option seeing single coverage. Yeah, look, if you bring in a T. Higgins, what is the ultimate goal there, right? Like, you're, you're talking about Garrett Wilson being your number one, Brees Hall probably being your number two. So at best... T Higgins is going to be your number three target. And that's if Rogers doesn't have some sort of connection with Conklin over the past year. I don't know. I like the idea of bringing T Higgins in, but given the contracts that we've seen from Ridley and even uh, Darnell Mooney getting $13 million a year, that is not the contract I thought he was going to be able to sign. I like wide receiver in the draft a lot better than signing one just because of the, the numbers that are being thrown around right now. Roshan says Hollywood has been a top seven wide receiver for a few uh, wide receiver, a few, I think it means week uh, years in a row. So we know the potential is there. We can get him cheap. And if he's healthy, we can take a top front off. Uh, we could take the top off most teams with our wide receiver too. I do like the idea of blowing the top off defenses. I think if there's any concern with the offensive line though, you'd prefer someone that gets open really, really fast. Now that could also be Hollywood Brown, but um I don't know. I, I would be interested. I, I'm curious to see what he winds up getting too. I would rather pay for him, I guess, than trade for T. Higgins. Dave the Dude says restructure to sign Tyron Smith. Imagine you get Tyron Smith and then Bakhtiari comes in later on. I don't know if I could see that, but I would uh I'd be on board. Daniel says, how about a trade for an offensive tackle and draft a wide receiver like Odunze? I love Odunze. Odunze might be my top option if he's there. If we're sitting on the on the clock at 10 and the Bears did not take Odunze at nine and he didn't go ahead of them, he would be very, very tempting. We've already seen the connection where Garrett Wilson wants to play with Odunze, like in some comments on, on Odunze going and registering for the draft in the first place. I think for me, that would be a good option. I think Bowers is an interesting option, and I think Brian Thomas Jr. is an interesting option, which I found out I screwed up his height. Screwed up his height. That's what happens when you're using sites that you shouldn't be using, I guess. Looking up his college heights. Uh, he's six foot three, not six foot five. Either way, I want him. Blitz Crew, thank you for the super chat, dude. Says, between free agency and the draft, I want Lazard to be the highest paid wide receiver four in the league. Hope we sign a wide receiver two and three in draft the other uh so hope we sign a wide receiver two or a wide receiver three and draft the other still thinking Bakhtiari I'm with you Blitzcrew I want Bakhtiari as our left tackle and then you have AVT as your emergency left tackle you're still grooming Carter Warren and Max Mitchell behind Morgan Moses and uh Bakhtiari I don't think it necessarily takes tackle off the board for us but I think it might take tackle off the board at 10 for us um depending on on who's available there uh as far as wide receiver two and three wide receiver three Market seems interesting. Like if I'm looking for a bigger body receiver, maybe a DJ Shark for a cheap, cheap contract would be the route I would prefer. And then drafting, you know, a Bowers or something like that in at number 10 in a trade down. Um, given what all these wide receivers are making in, in contracts, I would I would definitely prefer to draft one at this point. Allen says Jets will add four new offensive tackles. Bakhtiari, McGovern, four new, maybe four new offensive linemen. I think that's what you mean. Bakhtiari, McGovern. Tackle is the pick at 10. Guard in round four, maybe a Mahogany or a Zinter. At wide receiver, unfortunately, I see DJ Shark and could see the Jets trade a third or a fourth to move up uh, to draft Roman Wilson. I'm I'm fine with that. I'd be good with this, with this uh situation you got going on i feel like dj shark is the connection is there with our wide receivers coach i think cost wise makes a lot of sense high upside type of player guard in the fourth round i've been saying for a while zach zinter if you can get him would be absolutely incredible to get um and then if you take the tackle at 10 that gives you the reassurance right like you could still take a fuaga at 10 and have morgan moses at 5.5 million dollars be your backup like as much as he started every game last year he is supposed to have shoulder surgery or did have shoulder surgery, or about to have shoulder shoulder surgery, whatever it is. So maybe you like Mo, maybe you like Morgan Moses as a fallback fail safe at right tackle, and you're still going to take your right tackle at ten. I think that's fine. I think it depends on how how uh, confident they are in Moses, but I feel like it definitely hides your intentions at ten a little bit better, or allows you to maybe trade down and get a little more crafty with what you want to do at ten. 
Pauly says, Tyron Smith doesn't practice, has bad back, only a part-time player. There's going to be inherent risk going after a Tyron Smith or a Bakhtiari. Bakhtiari is the one I would prefer to go with because it's the knee. And if the knee is fixed, he's going to play. So I am uh, with the back. Back scare me for sure. But Tyron Smith would still be on my list. James Doyle says, we need a safety. Chuck Clark can't do it himself. We do have Tony Adams returning as well. I would like to see Ashton Davis come back on a contract uh, as well. Maybe you, you roll the dice on one of these safeties that are still sitting out there on the market. There's a lot of stuff there. Dwart says, Ryan, love the channel. Keep it up. Question, outside of Huff, what was your biggest disappointment so far in free agency? My biggest disappointment, I think, would be John Runyon signing with the Giants for $10 million. That that felt like a contract the Jets should have been able to get done, especially since they gave Simpson $9 million a year. I don't know if I love Simpson more than what Runyon has given us so far, but maybe there's a different style in their play, and the Jets are looking to just run the run the football Nonstop. It sounds like they're going to play power football. Smack people at the line of scrimmage. I did see that uh, Makai Becton is interviewing with the Cincinnati Bengals. Talking with them, they just lost Jonah Williams to the Arizona Cardinals. HMNI Cadoza says Jets ca current cap space after CJ Mosley deals a little above $24 million. So it would be a little above $24 million if the you know, without the other contracts. We don't know what the other contracts are because right now Morstead hasn't hit over the cap. Taylor hasn't hit over the cap. And I feel like I'm missing someone else. Simpson hasn't hit over the cap yet. So there's, it is going to be lower than that $24 million figure that you're you're saying there. Mr. Green Jean says, Blatt is way off. Boyd is headed to Pittsburgh. His family already asking comments. Uh, already taking Comments about it. I've been saying Boyd for to the Steelers since well, like over a month now. I know. I keep raining on Green Bean's parade. <laughs> Green, Green Bean really wants Tyler Boyd. And I was like, I'm with you. I want Tyler Boyd. I just don't think he's, I think he's going to Pittsburgh. He wants to play for uh, for Tomlin. Curly comes in. Curly says, signing Bakhtiari and hoping a left tackle falls to us in the draft would scare the poop out of me. So what other left tackle option do you want to go for? That That's probably where I come back to at this point. And Bakhtiari, you know, if you want to, I, I think you, you could still take a tackle. There's still going to be plenty of good tackles. But I would I like the idea of going Bakhtiari with the hope that Warren can develop and be your long-term left tackle while also having AVT as your emergency tackle if, if Bakhtiari were to go down. And I think you still draft a guard in the mid rounds to compete with Simpson and to also be that fallback if AVT has to get pulled. Bring back a McGovern, that's sort of the same thing. You can reshift Tittman around and have McGovern at center or have McGovern at guard. I feel like there's a few offensive line combinations that would make me feel a little bit more comfortable with the Bakhtiari signing. Um, but I would wait. I would wait till for a tackle to fall in round one because then, worst case scenario, if you take the tackle at 10 then you have Warren and Mitchell compete at the other side for tackle, depending on what side the uh, offensive line that rookie is going to play. Music, music, music man. Whew. Sorry, early this morning. Does JD take another, uh, does JD take a later round quarterback and will be carrying a third quarterback on the roster? I don't think the Jets are going to carry a third quarterback on the roster. I do think the Jets are going to draft a quarterback, but it's going to be someone that the Jets can either IR or stash on the practice squad. So I would go after someone like a Joe Milton in the seventh round if he's there, sixth round. If we, st I think we still have one sixth round pick. Um, someone with like a really high upside that wouldn't be poached off a practice squad. If you're going to go after a Spencer Rattler or a Pratt or a uh, like one of those types of quarterbacks, you probably do have to carry them as your third quarterback. If you take someone like a Jordan Travis a little bit earlier, you may like the upside there. And then at least you could IR him and he could get a red shirt year and still be around Rodgers and Tyrod Taylor. I would be happy with either one of those. Maybe the, the signing of a Tyrod Taylor is some sort of indication that we would like to get a more mobile quarterback, and maybe that's where we should be looking in the draft. I mean, most of the quarterbacks coming out nowadays are going to be mobile quarterbacks regardless. You're not going to see any more Peyton Mannings or uh, Tom Brady's that don't really move uh, outside of the pocket anymore. Marcelo says, we should draft Malachi Corley in the third and try to develop him like a Debo Samuel while still signing a free agent. I'd love a trio of Garrett, Mike Williams, and Corley. So I really like Alakai Corley. I'm totally down on drafting him in the third or fourth round. Um, third round, sorry. He may not get to us 
If we get a second round pick, you could consider that as well. There's a few good wide receivers that I wouldn't mind having. I really like the idea of trading down from number 10 to get a second round pick. However you have to do it, picking up that extra second round pick allows you to go with maybe a little bit more of a, I don't wanna say developmental tackle, but I think you could still get a good tackle or a good wide receiver, then take a developmental tackle in the second and then still plug in either a slot or a guard in the fourth round. That's what I would uh, kind of prefer says dude keep up the good work we need to get more o-line wide receiver will work itself out when corley uh when corey davis comes back give him eight million dollars boy just trash unless we sign him then he's the best ever <laughs> i would love corey davis back if we if you could tell me corey davis is coming back to the new york jets i would be all on board with uh with a corey davis signing i'd be so pumped with that i was so i wanted him to be wide receiver two last year so disappointed to see him uh see him leave Oh, sorry, Blitzcrew, didn't see this one in here. Uh, he says, between free agency and the draft, I want Lazard to be the... Oh, no, I did say that one. Sorry. I'm all over the place. Didn't want to miss anything. All right. What else you guys talking about in here? Hey, Big Bert says, hey, Ryan, I like the idea of trading back for a wide receiver. Thomas, in the first, kid is big body and ran 4-3-3. So I did fuck up the height. I screwed up the height. The height is not 6'5", it's 6'3". Combine height, six foot three, but still six foot three is plenty big to uh, to be a good receiver in this league. 17 touchdowns, that's silly. Silly. I feel like that would be fun. Pick up a second round pick, take a tackle or a guard in the second round. That's what I would want. Pauly Walnut says, nobody wants Zach right now, probably gets traded closer to regular season when quarterbacks start going down again. So that's what I thought the plan was gonna be for this year. And I'm fine with it being the plan for next year as well now i really hope that the relationship between the coaches and the owner and the and zach is not totally fried because honestly i would love to have zach as like the third quarterback and rogers has said he wants to have uh you know he would love to have zach back if zach wants to be here so this sort of implies zach doesn't want to be here which means i don't want zach back <laughs> if he doesn't want to be here he can kick rocks i don't want him here um but yeah i would like to like to move him i don't really want to just uh cut him and, and eat the full dead cap space i'd rather hold on to him like you said through training camp and then if you have to cut him on cut down day that's that's a totally different thing isaiah ellis comes in with super chat thank you justin fields makes so much sense for the jets does he though because it doesn't align with rogers contract if you're drafting a justin fields he's more of your backup quarterback than he is the future at quarterback because he's going into the final year of his deal. You're not exercising his fifth year option, which means you only have him for one year. So are you going to give up a third round pick, maybe a fourth round pick and a, you know, and, a, and something in the future to, to get Justin Fields. I don't think he makes any sense for the New York jets, unfortunately. And I like Justin Fields. I was a big Justin Fields fan when he was coming out. I don't think the Jets should be in on him at all. And I don't think Douglas would do it either. He passed on him. Anthony Cook says, if we, uh, I feel if we get David Bakhtiari and Tyler Boyd, that Joe might surprise us in the draft and draft Dallas Turner at 10 and a wide receiver in the third or fourth. I'd be so mad <laughs> if we took Dallas Turner <laughs> at 10. I, there's no, no situation where we take a defensive player at number 10 that I'm going to say, this is okay. <laughs> this is very much not okay right now. And I like Dallas Turner. I have no, no issues with Dallas Turner, but you're going all in, go all in. Don't do any of these half measures. I want an offensive tackle or a wide receiver at 10. Tight end would be the only other option for me. Evan says, a need you've talked about that I view as critical is running back two. What do you want to do with this juncture? Uh, at this juncture, sorry. I would very much like to draft a running back two. If you can get a Frank Gore Jr., that would be my preferred route. I like fresh legs at the running back position. If you have to go into the wide receiver or in the running back market and kind of poke around, see who's available. I think a JK Dobbins name pops up. I think an AJ Dillon name pops up. Maybe a Zeke pops up as a goal line back. I, I don't know if he's, is he with uh, New England still? Or I thought he was on a one year deal. Um, I don't particularly want to go the veteran running back route. I think we can spend that money elsewhere right now and you'd i'd rather the four-year cheap contract with a guy that could hit who knows maybe you get a frank Gore jr and he's like super explosive and then you have Brees hall on him and that's that would be friggin' wild duncan said after bushwhacking jd or after the bushwhacking jd got last year in the draft i wouldn't be surprised if he tried to address all needs before the draft 
Well, we wanted to address all needs before the draft last year. The issue was not having the quarterback and not being able to trade certain things because we weren't sure what we were going to have to give up for Rodgers. Now, I think trading down in the first, losing that tackle was was absolutely brutal. But um, yeah, I, we tried to go after Orlando Brown last year. Didn't have the quarterback to, to be able to secure him. The best thing you could do is plug all holes heading into the draft and go best player available. You don't want to have to reach for need. I'm okay, like leaning on need for uh you know maybe overdrafting a player by a few draft slots like five slots or something i'm, I'm good with that but you don't want to have to like reach too hard uh carl says damn i like quentin jefferson a lot he wound up going to the browns i believe right is it, that's what we're uh we're looking at right now i didn't see what his contract was hmni Cadoza, are there any wide receivers you would draft at 10 besides the big three brian thomas jr Brian Thomas Jr. is the other wide receiver that I would I would take at 10. I would I prefer to trade down, honestly. I feel like the top three are really the top three, and then there's kind of a, a drop-off at that point. Uh, if you could pick up a second-round pick and draft him, there's a few players I like in a trade down. If you can keep me in the top 15, 16 picks, I like Bowers. I like Brian Thomas Jr. I like J.C. Latham. I like Olu Fushanu. I like Fuaga. You know, all those different guys I'd be I'd be happy with. TC, if we continue to work on O-line, maybe bring a wide receiver in. Do you think we should target Bowers and give Rodgers that extra weapon? Yes, I do. I'd be fine with uh, with a Bowers pick. No issues there whatsoever. Hugh Lake says, Connor Rodgers was high on Fatanu and him being groomed to be a potential left tackle, or do you think he le uh, this leads to a trade down and drafting Mims while they sign Smith at left tackle. So I do like Fatanu, the guard, the tackle from Washington, who was actually projected to be a guard, but then he came in at the combine with longer arms than Fuaga. And I think people are a little more confident in him at this point. I do like uh, Fatanu. I would be fine with him in a trade down. I would be fine with uh, drafting Amarius Mims in a trade down. And I would love having a vet to give the hope that one of our guys could develop behind uh, Bakhtiari or something along those lines or, or Tyron Smith, whichever direction you, you honestly want to go. Let's see. Do you guys want to do call-ins? We can do some call-ins too. Let's do, I'll throw that on. If you guys want to do some call-ins, uh, you guys give me your thoughts. I will pin that in the live chat. Give me one second. All right, so that way you guys can let me know your thoughts if you want to call in. The call-in number is going to be pinned to the top of the live chat if you guys want to let your voices be heard. If not, we'll just keep talking to the, uh, the comment section. I'm totally fine with that. Let's see. So our poll question right now, next big move is trade for a wide receiver has 51%, sign an offensive tackle has 45%, other has 4%. See where that ultimately ends up going. We've got Allen on the line. Give me one second. I just got to move over here. Allen, what's up, dude? Welcome to the cockpit. I should probably hey, take this Hey, what's going on? Can you hear me? Thing. Yeah, I got you loud and clear. How are you? Um, I love the CJ Mosley move, which wish it was made last year. I think it's a year too late, mm -hmm. but uh, I can't complain about it. I don't think he was worth the cap hit that he was going to make this year. So two years at $17 million. I mean, I can't complain about two, two linebackers making $15 million if it's Quincy and CJ. So um, I can't complain about that portion of it. Um, I don't see Tyron Smith coming. I just can't see JD paying a 33-year-old tackle $15 million guaranteed per I think it's a receiver. I could see a Mike Williams making sense. I agree with you completely on Tyler Boyd. I think he goes to Pittsburgh. Um, I think we need two receivers. Um, my question is, I'm looking at the edge three market, and I'm seeing all these guys going, whether it's Floyd or whether it's Uche or whether it's Daryl Taylor. Who's a guy you could see the Jets going to get? Because I think the Jets need one more edge. Because as much as people are are excited about will mcdonald i just don't see it yet i think it's going to take him a little time he needs to grow into his body still um they need another edge very badly 
Yeah, I, d I do think we should go after an edge. And I don't know if it's going to be a veteran edge or if it's going to be a drafted edge, but I feel like having only JJ and Will McDonald, you have John Franklin Myers, who's probably going to be playing the early downs in place of Will McDonald. But then are you going to love having Clemens on the other side potentially? Or like, I, I agree. I think the loss of Carl Lawson and the loss of Bryce Huff make it some degree of, of need, like a sneaky need, I guess, for having let go of Huff. <laughs> you wouldn't think that would be the you know, where we'd go, but it's super frustrating. It's, it's definitely been a mixed uh, last couple of days. Again, egregious to give Javon Kinlaw $6.9 million. Yeah, and that's I'm pissed at that. Ridiculous. I, I don't know what Quentin Jefferson got, but I bet you he didn't get $6.9 million. I, I just don't get that one. Um, giving, I think they're, they're two defensive tackles they got. They're giving him about nine and a half to $10 million. And I think yeah. they even got worse. So I just don't get that portion of it. I don't um, love the the contracts on the defensive side right now. Like Kinlaw, I get, and that Liku Fu, Futu or whatever the hell his name is, he uh, is just like a checkbox. It's like, okay, yeah, we got a run stuffing defensive tackle, but is he better than what we had in Al Woods? I don't know. Al Woods was having a pretty good season. And Jefferson, I love to see that contract because I thought he had a really nice year last year where Kinlaw, mm -hmm. you're definitely banking on upside. So maybe there's a situation where you think, hey, he's going to stay healthy. We're going to see more of that first round pedigree. I think that's what they're gambling on. And I just I, the contract did not seem to align with where I felt he should have gotten. Like that's far more guaranteed money than I think he should have had. If you want to say incentives up to seven, but you guarantee him three, I feel like that would have been a better move. But I guess you probably didn't sign him at that point then. And one more position before I go is uh, mm. the safety position. I know that Ashton Davis has said that he wants to go where to start. Uh, mm. I like to see it. I don't know if anybody's going to give him starter money. I, yeah. I, I don't think Ashton Davis really fits as a starter anywhere. I think he's a backup. That's why he's effective with the Jets because he plays mm. limited snaps. They mm. they can't pay him $5 million. I think he's a $3 million guy at best. I mean, I wish they'd go and upgrade the position at safety, but again, it seems like the defensive philosophy with this team is they go – cheap on the safety position so I'd, I'd like them to bring uh ashton davis back and mm -hmm. um finally uh as far as running back to um i think it's either dylan or dobbins at that position i just don't see them spending a lot of money in that position and i don't think they're going to go in the draft for R rb2 because that's what izzy was there for last year so i don't think they're going to draft the tackle i mean a, a tight end i don't think they're going to draft the quarterback and I don't think they're going to draft a running back. And I know you mentioned Joe Milton. Joe Milton is absolute garbage. I remember <laughs> well, that's him. What I'm I want to practice squad this person. That's what I'm saying. Whoever you take as a late squad. step, if you're telling me there's going to be a 5% chance that the seventh round pick hits or a, a 1% or 2% chance that Milton hits, I'd rather take the 1% or 2% chance on Milton than the 5% the chance on a defensive tackle or something. I'd rather get somebody as a UDFA than spend a draft pick on a quarterback. I mean, I like Spencer Rattler at four yeah. or maybe Michael Pratt, but there's nobody at the back end of this draft that I'm ex exactly co confident in. So I would say if you want to draft a Pratt or Rattler, then you just have to be all right have, carrying a third quarterback because you, you can't IR him. You can't practice squad him, unfortunately. Uh, and I would prefer to have the extra offensive lineman for this year than a quarterback that we're hoping to not see as a redshirt year. But I agree with you. I, I do see I like I don't want Milton. <laughs> that wouldn't be my like ideal preferred spot. It's more of like a if you can get him as a UDFA, that's fine too. The idea with the UDFA thing though is that they can pick wherever they want to go, where if you just take them in the seventh round, you're locked into them on a four year contract. Um so I, I guess it depends and, and on if you have a valuable player there in in the seventh. And with this regime, I just don't really have no confidence in them developing a quarterback, especially knowing this is their do or die year. I'd rather them go with uh, Rodgers and Taylor and maybe bring in a guy as a camp guy and a guy yeah. who they could stash in the practice squad. I don't want them to draft the quarterback. I don't think there's anybody in this draft that I see uh, past round five that I think could be that sleeper. So, but I really appreciate it, Ryan. Thank you so much, man. Boom! Well, you've been ejected from You're the out cockpit. Here. Boys and girls, if you'd like to hit the call in number, it is pinned in the live chat, or you could scan the QR code when it pops up on the screen. We're going to go to our next caller. We've got James on the line. James, how you doing with your Snapple over there? Ryan, what's up, buddy? How are you? 
I'm hanging in there. How are you feeling about the C.J. Mosley contract? Do you think there's anything bigger coming down the pipeline? So I happen to know C.J. Mosley's family. Uh, great people, really. I know mm -hmm. his, um, his father and his uncle, awesome people, like salt of the earth. Um, I kind of meet up with them at least two to three times a year. Um, oh, that's like awesome. the family section. Yeah, yeah. Um, but I love it. I love C.J. Mosley. I think he's been, with the exception of that COVID year, which really, which really pissed me off. And I told, I told his family, I told his family that it bothered me that year. But um, he's been a great Jet. He's selfless. Mm -hmm. He's a great leader. He's, yeah. I'm, I'm thrilled with that. I really am because that's gonna that's gonna give us more room to operate and and make some other moves. Um, so. Uh, I called. I called Richie's show. <laughs> Richie's show yesterday. I called. Uh, I called Morgan Moses. Fucking Moses Malone. <laughs> so, <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. So I. I hope he plays like Moses Malone. But I love the signing. We obviously should have never gotten rid of him in 2021. Mm. But we can't cry over spilt milk. That's done. The newspapers down. It's mopped up. So uh, I think Moses at at right tackle, AVT at right guard. Tipman, I think, is going to take that next step at center. Hmm. Uh, Simpson at left, I like. If we could get Tyron Smith or, right, or we do the Bakhtiari, Fuaga, one of these guys in the first round, I'm totally hmm. okay with that. But I would love to see Tyron Smith and then another one of these first-round talents at left tackle. I don't think that's going to happen because – Tyron, I think if he's coming here, I know it's been proposed. It's a one-year deal, I think I, I read, but I don't know if he's going to want to, you know, sign on for for one year, depending on the incentives in the contract. So mm -hmm. my question to you is, what what do you think of the offensive line if we don't get Tyron Smith? you think we go with the, with the left tackle at 10 and then Bakhtiari or what? Yeah, I do think, I think Bakhtiari is just sort of a foregone conclusion. Like if you're going to roll the dice mm -hmm. on a Tyron Smith or a Bakhtiari, they're both kind of two, yeah. two faces on the same side of the coin for me, where, uh, you know, you still have to have that insurance policy. AVT for me would be my insurance policy. Now, if you don't have Bakhtiari on the roster prior to the draft, then I'm definitely strongly considering left tackle like Olu at number 10, because I do think he's going to end up being there. Now, if, if it were me, I would so? want Joe Alt. I think Olu's going to be there at ten. I think Alt goes to number seven. To I think Alt goes seven to the Titans now that they have wide receiver scratched off their list with this. Yeah, they have Ridley, Ridley, right? Yeah. Yep. 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 But I I love the idea of a trade down. There's a lot of tackles that I really like, and a lot of players I like in the first round. So give me a second round pick for a team to come up and get a quarterback, and then I would uh, I would prefer that over whatever players on the board at ten. I think outside of Alt. I, I agree with that 100%. I think that the the Ridley signing uh, to Tennessee is definitely they're definitely going with a with a tackle, um, mm -hmm. w w with that first pick. But um, I had another question for you. It's it's escaping me real quick. Um, so I'm not even gonna get into this whole A Rod stuff. I'm really not. Oh, I'm dude. Not even gonna, <laughs> I was like, I'm son of a bitch. I was like, I just not, want I'm this to like be a normal off season, <laughs> and then shit goes sideways. I know. Ryan, I know, but like, I, I think this is just this is just inevitable. What, me and you are around the same age now. Mm -hmm. With the social media and everything is out there, I don't think we can escape this. I think it's it's just got to oh, be dude. embraced. No, oh, I mean it, that's what's going to happen. There's going to be stuff on the internet from ten years ago that's always going to be bad. Like, I, if you look at Josh Allen's tweets from before he was drafted, he has tweets from high school like <laughs> having some racially charged like, things. Like, they were yeah. racially charged tweets. Like, Absolutely. Like, so, like there, you give dumb, you, you give dumb young kids uh, the internet platform. Like, if I had a Twitter on, or a, a Facebook or anything when I was in middle school and <laughs> like course, elementary, I'd be saying stupid shit course. all the time. <laughs> Bro, if so, there was a camera on me But right Rodgers wasn't a Rodgers is an stuff. adult. So like there's the, the, the part of me with Rodgers is like have your private conversations. I'm totally fine with that. When he talks to a reporter about it, that's when I'm like, "Ah, come on." <laughs> like don't you're just yeah. you're stirring the pot now and I don't want to stir the pot. That's That's my only issue. That's my only issue. I think it's it's like let me step my let me just step in the water. See how see how cool it is, see how hot yeah. it is, and then go from there, navigate it from there. So I agree yep. with you, but I like I like the trajectory we're headed. Um, I'm trusting in Joe D. I like to stay positive always. The season always beats me down, but um, we'll go from here. I can't remember what I was going to tell you, but we'll talk soon, brother. I appreciate it, man. James, thank you so much for the call. No. You've been ejected. Where's my chick? There it goes. <laughs>
from the cockpit. And he's frozen. That's cool. You're out of here. James, thank you so much for the call. We've got AC joining the show. AC, how you doing today, brother? Oh, my goodness. Sorry, there's a little bit of a lag. <laughs> I can't talk to you. Hey, how you doing? Good, good, good. What's on I your can't mind, hear bro? you for some reason. You know what? I'm gonna hang up on you. Just call back. I'm just gonna back. ask you. I'm just gonna ask you. Uh, don't you think that Tyron Smith or Bakhtiari, these guys haven't been able to stay on the field for a whole year? So, mm -hmm. so don't you think that's a waste of money? And so thank I'm you. Uh, I can't hear you, so I gotta go. All right, AC. Couldn't hear you, but I will answer your question. I thought that was a uh, a well thought out question. And uh, so Tyron Smith, Bakhtiari, both missing a lot of time the last few years. I did just eject someone from the, the call in <laughs> as well. So you can, you can get in there as well. Okay, Nick's back in the in the the behind the scenes. Um, Bakhtiari, Tyron Smith, there's going to be issues with either one. You have the, the injury issues, and I think you cannot rely on them to stay healthy for the entirety of the season. If you're going into this season with one of those two guys penciled in as your starter, that's fine, but you have to make sure you are prepared to have to either move ABT out to tackle in the event of an injury or hope that Carter Warren has developed enough to prepare to play that potential side. You cannot have them as your only, only option. And I do think if you bring them in, it does still leave you the ability to take a tackle at number 10. I would prefer to trade down and try to acquire more players to help us for this year as opposed to taking a player at 10 that ideally doesn't see a damn snap if Bakhtiari is playing at the level he needs to play at and Moses is playing at the level he needs to play at. So I, I do see what you're saying. There's definitely a lot of risk with going one of those two players, but you have to be willing to be able to move players around and have that O-line flexibility. So I like Tyron. I like Bakhtiari, but it definitely presents a little bit of uh, concern, I guess, from an injury perspective. All right, we're going to go over to Nick. Nick, how you doing, brother? Howdy, howdy. Uh, I'm getting out of the car, but I just want to say love the show. Thank uh, you. Keep doing what you're doing. But I wanted to say that you, I love, I love the CJ Mosley uh, contract restriction as I've wanted him to retire a jet for a while now. Mm -hmm. But regarding the O-line, I saw the Cardinals just got rid of their uh, offensive uh, tackle. I think it's DJ Humphreys. I could be wrong. So he uh, tore his ACL up. week 17. Oh, did he? I did not know that. All right. Yeah, that's, that was one of the guys I was penciling in. I was like, ooh, DJ Humphreys would be a really nice like uh, pickup there. And then I like did my research. I was like, son of a bitch. <laughs> Torn yeah, ACL. Yeah, I was He's like, probably done oh, for the man, year. I'd, I'd really love it if he would have been able to be penciled in as our starter instead of Bakhtiari or Tyron Smith as mm -hmm. I have. No, I, I don't have any confidence. Uh in 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 them staying healthy past four games i really don't and like as, as much as it sucks to say man as big of injuries as we've had on the offensive line we cannot we cannot prepare ourselves to have anyone starting that is injury prone in any sense even if he's dog <laughs> shit, i want him in their 18 fucking games all are day. you oh, team sorry, olu in the draft like olu fashanu or do you like you want to go tackle at 10 still I want to go tackle a 10 or trade back, and I'm fine with Mims uh, mm. at, like, you know, maybe 13 or something if we trade with Denver or the Raiders. Mm. But I, can, I, can't, I can't have watching our offensive line get decimated again. It sucks. I want fucking 2010 offensive line to come back uh, and just play. Honestly, at 50 years old, I don't care. We need people. We, we need Fanica, uh, Mangold, DeFrickashaw, come on back. We want them all. Exactly. We need all of them back. I want them back. I want them back. It's like ripping a hole in my heart <laughs> that our offensive line like sucks so bad. Yeah, dude, it I'm, I'm a little suck. concerned with going with the Bakhtiari route, but at the same time, like there is that incredible reward payoff if it does hit where it's like you're getting a top five I, tackle and a best friend of Aaron Rodgers, and then you're using I, 10 in a different capacity. It's like, ooh, shiny thing. I want it. <laughs> oh, Nick. Nick I'm going to eject you. I think I lost you there. With, Towards the end. Uh, Beck Boom! Nick. You've been here. ejected from the cockpit. 
All right, we'll go back to the phone lines. We've got Lima Bean and then Cameron on the line. Go over to Lima Bean first. Lima Bean, how you doing, brother? Good, good. It's just didn't realize it was Monday already. Like, uh, <laughs> but um, Bakir scares the hell out of me, man. Like, uh, you know, it's just he's so in four years he only played like one of those four years. He was injured all three of those other years. It's kind of scary, like how injured he gets. And like, especially on our turf, that that really does scare me. And if we do get Bakhtiari, I still rather get a tackle behind him. Like, um, when the Steelers took the tackle we wanted, they didn't play him right away. They he was behind whoever their tackle was, and I think that's probably the better route. So like, you don't want to throw him to the lines right away. So, but I don't know. Bakhtiari always scares me. He always scares the like. Just I'm afraid he's gonna like walk in, and then like the first day he just goes down. Like you know, it's just. He has missed three straight like years or one out one out of four years. Like that's he played. That's it. Like it's his injury history is really troubling. So the injury history, so. he had the the water on the knee this past year. And if you can if that's fixed, if the fluid on the knee is fixed, that's the the piece for me. Because before that it was the uh, appendix, and I don't think that's necessarily something that's gonna reoccur. And then it was January twenty twenty two or 20 yeah january 2022 when he had uh some sort of aggravation where he got had fluid on the knee as well so that was again that same sort of injury if the structure of the knee is fine and there's no risk of tearing and it's it's just figuring out why that fluid's continually building up i feel a lot more comfortable with bakhtiari but i think signing a bakhtiari or a tyron smith just gives me more confidence to trade down like trading down is what really appeals to me i think more so than passing on offensive tackle like, it's not that I don't want to take a tackle at 10. Well, I guess it is kind of like I don't want to take a tackle at 10. I'd prefer to take a tackle at, say, 14, 15, and also have a second-round pick than maybe getting our pick of the litter uh, at 10. I get it, but, like, what if we, like, you know, it's, what if we get a tackle that's really good that's at that spot? That's the question. Like, like do, what do you want to risk going down? Like, because I remember in 2020, we missed out on, like, things of that nature by constantly trading down, and we just kept missing. <laughs> so, mm. um yeah, I would like a second round pick, but like if, like you know, for some reason a really great tackle was available at the ten spot, like I don't know if we should hesitate and not take them. You know, oh, I agree. I, I'm, I think, I'm, I'm still... and it depends how you rank them, right? Like if they have Alt above everything else and he's there, I like taking Alt. If you have Fuaga and he's just heads above everyone else, and you're like, hey, we don't know if Morgan Moses after the sol- shoulder surgery is going to be what he was before, take Fuaga there. But I think it allows you the opportunity if multiple tackles are there. Like, let's say you grade tackles two, three, four, and even five maybe with Mims as, like, roughly about the same. Move on down, take whoever winds up falling to you. I don't think you pass on a guy that you love at 10 because of a Bakhtiari or a uh, uh, or Bakhtiari or a Tyron Smith. Lima Bean! Well, what I- You have been ejected <laughs> from the cockpit. Where's my chicken? <laughs> This is what happens when I have so many people calling in. The chicken freezes. <laughs> ah, chicken! You're out of here! All right, we've got Cameron, then Rob, then Nick. I see Ricky and RJ calling in. I'm going to leave you guys uh, on the line for just a little bit. We're going to go to Cameron first. Cameron, how you doing, brother? I'm well, sir. How are you? I'm hanging in there. How are you feeling about the CJ Mosley restructure, and do you think there's any um, move coming beyond I mean, this? I- yeah, I, I like C.J. Mosley. I think he's been a strong linebacker for us for a while. Mm. Um, you know, he's consistent. He's the leader on the team. Obviously, people trust him. They like him. He's good in the locker room. So why wouldn't we bring him back? Um, I like the Morgan Moses move. I am I am hoping for Bakhtiari personally because we've invested so much in Aaron Rodgers already. We mm. kind of might as well go all in. You know, yep. we gave him everything he wanted last year. What stops us this year from doing one more move? Yep. Um, because preferably... I'd like Bowers or Odunze or one of those guys in the draft. Um, I think they have a more long-term benefit. I understand, you know, we have tackle needs, we have guard needs, things like that, but we need to build an offense that isn't just Brees Hall, you know, give me your best shot, give me your best run, Mm -hmm. and Garrett Wilson, please, God, get open, you know, and then nothing else. And I realize the quarterback needs time to throw, but if he has nothing to throw to, it doesn't matter if we give him three years in the pocket, if mm. if guys are you know covered. So, 
The nice thing about Bowers, too, and just I, I like the idea of going with a weapon in the first because that's five years. And if Rodgers right. is saying two, three, four more years, you now have all your young weapons for Rodgers locked in. Garrett's locked in. Brees is locked right. in. This new wide receiver or tight end would be locked in. Not to mention a Bowers gets open close to the line of scrimmage. So to some degree, the offensive line is kind of neutralized by getting the ball out so fast to a Bowers, to a Brees, to a Garrett. I feel like operating within that Tom Brady type space yep. would be the the best yeah, way to go Gronk about did it for brady yup 100 you know. now gronk was a lot bigger gronk i think was six foot seven Correct. or six six bowers i think measured in at like six foot three so he is smaller in that respect yeah but he's he doesn't so struggle fast. to get he's a game breaker we've seen that mm. and he's playing in the best division in 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 college football in the sec so if he can do it on the i think the best team i thought georgia was the best team this past year um i agree i think he can do it in the nfl just fine yep all right, are well, you team trade good. down or are you team time. draft at 10? Um, no, I'm, I'm, if we can get one, either Bowers or Odunze where we, where we sit at 10, do it. Mm. If they're both gone and we don't love anybody, trade down, get the second round pick, mm. you know, um, hell, even give Salah a defensive piece. I mean, no, if you're no, keep him no, no, coach, no, 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 Cameron, no, <laughs> no, I'm ejecting you. <laughs> I do not want to hear defensive piece. No, I'm gonna kick and scream like a little, a little kid if we wind up drafting a defensive piece. But I like where your your head's at. Cost wise, financially wise, a weapon at number ten, particularly at wide receiver, would be very, very uh, financially responsible for the Jets moving forward for the next few years. Tight end, you're probably financially good for the next four, and then that fifth year probably gets you into a little bit of hot water. I guess it depends what tight end contracts look like uh, down the board. Uh, we got Rob, the Jet fan, coming in. Rob, how you doing, brother? Buddy, buddy, I'm I'm scared for you, man. I'm scared. Why is that? I, I'm thinking that you're taking too many of those gummies that you want Bakhtiara. <laughs> I've got so my, you got to lay up on that stuff. You lay up I've on got, that got stuff my gummies, thinking, but I, I have not taken any. I got my my coffee you're actually. Not, you're not thinking clearly if you want that walking in. That that guy just thinks of giant stadium turf and he gets injured. Uh, <laughs> I would. So you're not, not a Bakhtiari be, fan at all. Not at all. Zero. If that guy comes in three years, thirteen games, come on, man. Mm. I don't trust that guy at all. If that's our game plan, I'm real scared. I'm real. I'm scared. hoping he comes they, in after the draft, so that way we have to build without him. And then he's more of a bonus offensive lineman than anything else. You have to be like a like a third option for me, not even a oh. second option. So who's your who's no, your I'm top option for left tackle? Um, probably Fashano. Okay. Uh, like hopefully we get him in the draft because he seems like a plug and play, or mm. like what you said. It's not what I want to do, but I love absolutely love Fuaga. Oh, I yeah. love Fuaga. I think he would be our right tackle for the next 10 years. He's a beast. I love the way he attacks the game. I love the way he, he sandwiches and pancakes people to the ground. He goes Throwing under. dudes. I freaking love that crap, dude. So uh, if they could get him, um, and then if they had to put AVT as uh, our left tackle, then so be it. And then we could always get the guard. Guards are a lot easier to get than tackles, obviously. Mm -hmm. Uh, another thing I'm going to kill you on, buddy. I'm sorry, but I don't want Brock Bowers either. Hell no. Ooh, I mean, what about you? Don't like weapon don't, early in the draft. Like I, I prefer no, wide receiver no, over a Bowers, but I wouldn't be upset with Bowers. Not, I'm hoping Bowers goes before our pick. It's not that I don't like a weapon, but mm. to be honest with you, we have to go offensive lineman no matter what. Um, I think it drops off once you get off of the top three, and you know which three I'm talking about. Once you start getting into Mims or Guyton and stuff, I don't think those guys are plug and play. So they're going to take some time to develop. And unfortunately, we don't have Aaron Rodgers for that long. So I don't think we have the luxury to wait. I think we have to find as close as we can to plug and play. So uh, as far as that, where I would be tempted is if uh, Arome Adunze was there, mm -hmm. I would be tempted with him. I would be tempted with him as opposed to uh, a tight end, to be honest with you. Have you um, watched any of uh, Brian Thomas Jr.? That's the only other player. Like, I love the idea of trading I, down. 
I can honestly couple. say it, I've, seen, I've seen a little bit of Pearsall, and I know mm -hmm. he's going to go a lot later, but yeah. he, he was very impressed of Pearsall, I have to say. But no, I haven't seen Thomas at all, to be honest with you. So Thomas Jr., LSU, had 17 touchdowns this past year, almost 1,200 yards. Uh, really explosive year for them. Six foot three, bigger bodied wide receiver. If you could trade down a little bit, because I do like, I like the top four tackles, Alt, Fashanu, Latham, and uh, Fuaga. Those would be the four I feel real confident in. And then Mims would be like maybe my emergency one that I feel like could play left or right tackle. And I feel like with the Morgan Moses and the signing of a Bakhtiari, that would give you some time to develop that potential tackle where you may not have to force them in the same way. Like, so if you don't love Mims as a starter immediately, maybe Bakhtiari for six games while, you know, Mims is trying to develop a little bit isn't the worst. But that's if he's, if he's okay, Bakhtiari. What happens if he's injured? Then what, what do we do then? Now you're waiting on a guy who still needs to be developed. And if Bakhtiari gets injured like he normally does, because he's only started 13 games in three years, then, then what's the plan? I mean, you're going to have to go get I think someone. AVT, and then, AVT has to be the emergency tackle. If you're bringing in Bakhtiari, yeah. I think AVT has to be. Like, if, you're, if your plan is to go weapon early in the draft, AVT has to be the emergency tackle. That's my only thought there. Rob! I think they can't so much for take the that goal. risk. Where's my chicken? <laughs> I don't know where the chicken went. There we go. Chicken freezing up on me. All right. Thank you, Chicken. Thank you for showing up. Jonathan Moore, 8 a.m. watching my boys Jets live stream. John, thank you so much for hopping in. Our little Colorado buddy over there. Hopefully the girls are doing well. Father, two girls on that side. Jet fan. Good man. Good man. Uh, all right. Let's hop over to Nick. I want to hear what Nick has to say about our New York Jets and this deal. Talk to me, brother. I'm back. Uh... <laughs> I got me. We got. I was gonna say that Lions main was. I I remember that one. <laughs> but uh, the last thing I wanted to say is our 2024 uh, season depends on the 2024 election, which is like the most Jets thing I think I've ever like. Oh my ever, god! Could you imagine if friggin' <laughs> Aaron Rodgers? Be but, it, it, there's no way it's gonna if, it's gonna I mean, be one of Trump Aaron or Biden. Rogers, it's not gonna be RFK. We don't have to worry about it. I just want Rogers to come out and say I'm focused on football. I'm not doing the the, the politics. I'm not doing the campaigning because that's the. Could you imagine if we had to have him like campaign? You're, you're preaching. I, my my biggest fear is that he's gonna like double down on it and be like, no, nah, I can do both, uh, and I want to do. I want to be vice president and win a Super Bowl, and like yeah. after that, season's fucking done. I'm It'd be all bed. if he does uh, that, I'd be so bad. fucking pissed. I'd be so mad. I would be oh, so point, pissed off. At that point, I heard at that point, trade for Justin Fields. I do not care. Yep. Uh, yeah, I'm with you. Like, if if, get, if Rogers, Rogers were to do that, I would be so frosted. Oh, oh, 100 percent. Like, and I, I'd, I'd say fuck you, Rogers. You're not getting your money either from the Jets. Uh, but you <laughs> I don't know if it off. works like that, unfortunately. I, I, I. I will personally like hold Woody Johnson like accountable for like keeping his money and not giving it to Rogers. I don't care what I I'll fucking put the bill if I need to. Dude, Woody would love if Rogers ran for VP because it'd be one of those things where it'd be like, oh, I have all the cameras on us all the time forever. Not just with him on the oh. field, but everything off the field. It'll be Jets quarterback running <laughs> oh, for office. Like he would he'd be smitten. Oh, uh, there's like, there's no like worse nightmare for me. Uh, but I would like to go. I really want wide receiver at ten. Uh, I'm mm. doing dishes, by the way, so that's why I'm not focused. That's that's but. okay. <laughs> it's it's ten uh, o'clock. It's like my one day. It's, it's my one day off. I got things to do. But that, I that is totally am cool. currently talking Jets, and I'm loving it. So here we are. <laughs> but I love the early morning stream. Uh, oh yeah, but no, I want. I'd love to. I'd love to go. I'd love to trade back, get a second round pick, and uh, get a wide receiver. I, I'm okay on Bowers. I, I truly am. But man, it's just I'm. I like our tight ends now. I really don't think Bowers would add like enough, be enough of a weapon to like go first round tight end. And like no tight end in the first round has ever been anything good. But that's where I'm going to leave that. Uh, enjoy your day. 
Enjoy your dishes, Nick. Boom! You have been ejected You're out of here. from the cockpit. All right. I've got Ricky from New York, then Devin, then RJ on the line. I just want to hop over to RJ. RJ says, is both Tyron and David Bakhtiari bartering not possible? Um, I mean, I guess they could be going back. Are you saying both together or are you saying they're going against each other as far as contracts go? I guess it's possible. Like if they both potentially want to end up with Aaron Rodgers, maybe there's a little jockeying back and forth. I guess, do you prefer RJ and maybe this is you in the uh, live chat as well, or not in the live chat, in the um, in the call-in, if it is. Uh, do you prefer Tyron or David, one way or the other? I think I prefer Bakhtiari over Tyron, just because I think he's more likely to sign a team-er-friendly-er deal <laughs> with the New York Jets. And if the knee's right, I trust the knee being structurally sound more than I trust uh, Tyron's back not giving him problems throughout the year. Uh, all right, we're going to go over to Ricky. What's up, Ricky? How you doing? Hey, what's happening, Ryan? Uh, my initial reaction is I don't want to hear anything about any initials. Not RFK, not MVS, not OBJ, none of that shit. I don't want to hear No it. acronyms. No acronyms. Uh, yes, none, none of them. Uh, you know, um, I was really happy yesterday with Moses coming back. Uh, you know, the, the Kinlaw thing, you know, I'm going to have to wait and see. That was more than I expected them to pay. Now, if we get a stud next to Quinnen and, and mm. it, you know, I'll, I'll be ecstatic, you know, mm. uh, either that, or, you know, I'm going to end up resenting Kinlaw like my in-laws, uh, you know, <laughs> Dude, I don't if know. Kinlaw hits, it's going to be great. He's just got to stay healthy and build off what this past year was. Yeah. Now, uh, I think it was Buffalo Jet, I think, last night tweeted, like, if we got Tyrone Smith and, like, Mike Williams or something, what would you want the Jets to do? And I was like, okay, you know what? Here's a take. I, I, I'm all for that. You know, I, I don't mm -hmm. think we'll get both, but I still want to get Tyrone Smith. That way we can do whatever the hell spot with the same name i would take quinion mitchell uh the the corner from toledo uh Whoa. for a, a, maybe an eventual successor for dj reed and Damn, then i would turn I around with that stuff, defense that and, I would take, yeah. uh, and i would take uh mitchell the receiver from texas i'd take two guys with the same name he's gonna Ooh. be good uh, if you trade and, down, that would be that would be sneaky if they were to let DJ Reed walk after the season. See, I don't I don't love that. I love the idea of having Reed for the window that we have Rodgers for and going offense in the first round. If we go defense, I'm going to be pretty salty. I don't think there's a defensive position. You know what? I would I would I'm hoping that we like extend him for like Ah, oh, Ricky, I think I dropped your call. Ricky. You have been ejected from the cockpit. Damn. That's what happens. Ricky, good call. I don't don't agree with you on Quinion Mitchell. You're out of here. Or defense in the first round. <laughs> but but that's all right. Everyone's got their opinion. We got Devin, then RJ, then Joe, your Atlanta Jets fan. Let's go over to Devin. Devin, how you doing, brother? I'm doing well. How you doing? I'm hanging in there. How do you feel about the CJ Mosley restructure and what's your plan for the offensive line? Love it. I love the Mo Moses deal yesterday. Mm -hmm. Missed the initial announcement of it. I was at work and it's understandable. <laughs> I want to, I want to apologize for dipping out on you yesterday. Cause I tried to call while I was at work. Like I am today, <laughs> but I got, got loaded and had to dip. Um, <laughs> it's okay. I, I, I want to talk to you real quick about a trade down. Okay. I know you're a proponent of only falling back five to six spots at most. Mm -hmm. What about falling back into the early 20s? There are tackles mm -hmm. that are developmental there. Mm -hmm. We could get a guy like Bakhtiari, pick up the second round pick, and possibly if this team is wide receiver hungry or even future quarterback hungry, mm -hmm. get a first round pick for next year. 
Wow. If you could get a first round pick, I would be okay falling that far back. Cause I do like Mims. I do like Guyton, especially with a Bakhtiari and a Moses already locked in. Um, I don't want to go that far back, but if you could tell me I could get a second and a first, like a second this year and a first next year, then I'm, I'm happy with that. Uh, then I would probably, I think I've, Mims would be my top target Mims and Brian Thomas jr. If either one of them were there, I'd be down with that. I'm in love with a guy by the name of Jordan Morgan out Ooh, of Arizona. Arizona. Yep. He has a lot of starts under his belt Pac-12. too. I think he's fi- five year starter. I think, uh, Four and a half. He only started four mm. games his freshman year, but okay. he's a solid guy. He's got a little shorter arm, so yeah, that's mm. always a concern at tackle. Mm. But what is it? Tristan Wirfs a couple years ago had the shortest arm, was some of the shortest arms ever recorded at the combine for a tackle. Mm. He's just fine. Just fine. Yep. Yeah. I'm thinking 20 to Tampa. Interesting. I've done the math. They need another wide receiver. Mm. It would give us mathematically by the point chart, a first, a second, and a potential fourth. Mm. If they're really that hungry, though, the math adds up to get that first next year because that first next year is only worth a second this year. What pick is Tampa? Are they 26, 23? Because I, I know, 20, I think it goes Steelers. I want to say they're 23. I was going to say, I think it goes want, Steelers, Dolphins, Eagles, and then I think it's Tampa after that. So 23. Hmm. That's that's really far back. But if you can get me a first is, next year, it gets me excited. Because then mm-hmm. now you're playing yeah. with two firsts next year. And now you're like, okay, if we want to go get a quarterback that we love, you could do that. If you want to, yep. uh, you know, just build around Rodgers for next year, you could do that too. Interesting. It's I'm only looking ammo. for like a second it, round pick. <laughs> you, you're 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 blowing my doors off with the first round next year. <laughs> Listen, Devin, you got to do what you got to do. You been ejected from the cockpit. Devin, get back to work. Get back to work. Thank you for the call. We've got Joe, your Atlanta Jets fan, and then RJ coming up. But I want to hop over to Matthew real quick. He says, "No defense that early. Trade back O line in the first, and Thomas in the second. Uh, which Thomas are you talking about in the second? I don't know which Thomas you're talking about, but I do like O-line or Thomas in the first <laughs> and then uh, go in the opposite position in the second round. That would be uh, my preference. All right. So we've got Joe, your Atlanta Jets fan, then RJ, then Johnny. Uh, let's go over to Joe. Joe, how you doing, brother? What's going on, man? What's going on? Hang uh, on. It's I been a lot. About this Mosley restructure or Mosley New Deal. Yeah, yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, I'm excited about that. We're bringing him back. Um, I'm just really just sitting back, no expectations at all. Um, sitting back, really just um, seeing what what moves we're gonna make. Um, a trade back would be nice though. Uh, mm. But I don't, I don't want Brock Bowers. You know, it'd be great mm. to have a, a third, what, a fourth tight end. We like drafted in a row. Uh, <laughs> but <laughs> you know, and he's an extreme weapon. But we can, if we could trade back. Mm-hmm. Get up, uh, the old lineman, and in the second round, I want Lad McConkey. I'm gonna be honest with you. Ooh, wow, that, he blew up <laughs> his pro lad. day. We've been talking in our group yeah. chat, myself, Green Bean, Matt, uh, Dom, Tigo, and Jeremy. We've been talking about Lad blowing up his, his the combine, the senior bowl, his pro day. Yeah, guy's trending in the right direction. Yeah, yeah. If he's if he doesn't go in the first round, then he's mm-hmm. definitely a second rounder for sure. And I would love to have Lad McConkey on the New York Jets team, and I want to see him nowhere else. Um, that's just me, me personally. So, who do you uh, want Brock in the first round? Are, are you feeling like uh, like tackle still, or do you want? Yeah, yeah, tackle okay. for sure. Tackle for sure. Um, I forgot the guy, uh, Fashano, mm-hmm. that you uh, you stated yes yesterday. Penn State, yeah, at, yeah, uh, yeah, from Penn State. Yeah, he's 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 a monster. And then we could trade back, you know, get him, and then mm-hmm. second round get Lad. Uh, I'm I'm good for the rest of the draft. I don't have, I don't care. <laughs> I feel so <laughs> happy if we can if we can pick up a second round pick from trading down. Trading down, I think, is like aside from maybe alt falling and feeling real comfortable with getting alt yeah. there. I very much want to get the trade down 
uh, and net yeah. an extra extra pick. I don't even mind if it's a even a more developmental type tackle, like an Amarius Mims or something along those lines. Right. Like I'd be more willing to roll the dice with a Bakhtiari starting and having some more developmental pieces behind them. Yeah, I mean, because you know, once once Bakhtiari gets on that uh that good MetLife Stadium uh <laughs> turf, you know, his days are numbered. He, so. <laughs> he, see, the, the bad thing with Bakhtiari, or the thing I don't mind with Bakhtiari, is half his games, regardless of where he ends up playing, are going to be on turf because half the stadium yeah, league have turf. Now, yeah. I guess you could argue home team. You're playing your home eight games there. And that may put more stress combined with the additional turf games that you play on the road, but man, I yep. just, I, I feel like it's a foregone conclusion that he's going to end up in New York at this point. Yeah. 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 You know, the writing's on the wall for that, but you know, I got to get back to work being the world's greatest employee wearing my last uh, bit of my New York jets, uh, Jersey. And, uh, you know, <laughs> before we can switch to the new one. So, I love it, Joe. Hey. Get back to work. You have been ejected from the cockpit. Where's my chicken? Where's my chicken? There we go. That's it. You're out of here. All right. We've got RJ and then Johnny. Just want to hop over to Costas real quick. Costas says trade back, get offensive line late first and Leggett day two. Xavier Leggett is a really exciting wide receiver. I like a lot of the receivers in the second round. I feel like Leggett, Tez Walker, um, you know, possibly an A.D. Mitchell and maybe a Fra Troy Franklin falls that far. There's a lot of guys that I could get on board with in the second round, both from offensive tackle or wide receiver. So whatever you deem as more valuable at the top of the draft, I'm cool with whoever you can get on the back end of the draft. Love, it. love the trade down idea. All right, let's head over to RJ. RJ, how you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, man? Can you hear me? How you Yep, loud and clear. How are you feeling about C.J. Mosley, and what do you think we do at 10 now? Oh, my God. This dude is uh, a true field general, man. He mm -hmm. he is a leader. The fact that he walks it like he talks it, like every, he's always been about us for the last few years, and uh, his actions tend to always prove that uh, his belief is, is, is in us. So, I mean, as fans, we the dude's, dude's a fan favorite for a reason. Mm -hmm. absolutely i I'm, um, I'm a big fan of him coming back on the two-year contract too i think they're gonna align everyone to match up with that two-year window with rogers which 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 leads me to 10 man it's like uh realistically speaking our regime we stink at developing offensive linemen and we stink at developing quarterbacks all right we do we're just not good at it mm -hmm. i'm not trying to put 40 year old rogers behind uh a, a rookie a rookie, uh, somebody that we need to train up, and especially with Keith Carter as our offensive line coach, and mm. the fact that other good offensive linemen just love to take shit on him, um, I'm not, I'm not, not super happy about it. I would love let's get vets in the door, let's get guys that don't have crazy injury history, and let's build that process out from people that have uh, succeeded mm. in different systems, and say, yo, this is what works. Let's start making that play like a jet mentality real versus uh, throwing in a bunch of rookies, hoping that they land. Unless your name is control delete. Like I'm not interested. <laughs> get me, get me a vet. Um, if you want a developmental quarterback in the fourth, fifth or sixth mm -hmm. round, like what's, what's the point by the time Rogers is out, we're probably pushing this guy out or we're looking at the next quarterback. Let's take those back end picks. Let's start utilizing them smartly in trades, just like we did for Morgan Moses. Um, we have a very, very small window. I'm not trying to have little kids um, wait on their grown man strength to come in mm -hmm. two or three years later. Let's get some real, real uh, heads in here. And and we can't rely on David Bakhtiari being our, our left tackle uh, starter, right? We, we've got to have a contingency plan where uh, maybe he starts half of the year or maybe mm -hmm. he is uh, the starter with a an above average backup uh, there in play because... Would you be Rogers okay with AVT now. as the emergency tackle if we bring in Bakhtiari? Or do you want someone no, in addition no, to... No, no, no. You want AVT Absolutely to stay in a Absolutely not. I love AVT, man. Um, and we just keep on doing wrong by him. We keep on changing up his position with this bullshit of... Uh, oh, sorry about my language. That's right. Um, with this crap <laughs> of uh, positional flexibility. Now you have a guy that's, that's running backwards on their left-hand side, and then the next mm. week they're running back on their right-hand side. Now they're jumping back... And you're, that's a great way to get hurt. 
We mm-hmm. keep on looking at ABT like he's a Pro Bowl guard, but uh, we can't even put the guy in the position to to go be a Pro Bowler because we keep on moving people around. So I would love to – these guys have worked in these positions for years and years and years. We need to trust that they are good at their position that we are going to draft them for, not – uh, say, oh, well, we can just jump him mm. over here if we need it, or we can move him over here if we need it. Well, we're always going to need it, so we need to plan accordingly. So what's your plan at left tackle, then? If you don't want a young kid to be the the tackle there, you don't want to rely on a young kid, but you also don't want Bakhtiari and Tyron Smith because of the injury history, what's your play at left tackle? So my, my play at left tackle is uh, kind of sort of similar to the creativity of what we did with Morgan Moses. We mm-hmm. use a couple of those back-end... Uh, Back end, uh, back end uh, draft capital, and and go get a guy that's a little bit above average, and then then sign back the area as our as our our feel good contingency on a cheap um, Aaron Rodgers discount. But um, but yeah, we have uh, these these four, five, and six, and how how seven? How often are we are we actually seeing these guys get rostered up? Like so we we're still confused about We do anything. have one sixth, and I think we have two sevenths right now. So there, are, there is a little bit of wiggle room for guys that are like Garrett Bowles. If they want to get rid of Garrett Bowles over in Denver or drop his cap hit, I would love to trade for him. That would be my like number one get for left tackle, I think. But RJ, uh, no, I love it. You better check that from the get cockpit. I love when the chicken actually goes across the screen the correct way. I probably only should have like one or two people on the call in line <laughs> at a time because it's probably my internet throttling down. Uh, all right, we've got Johnny on the line. I just want to hop over. Uh, did we have a... No, I didn't have a super chat come in. Okay, we're good. I'm going to head over to Johnny. Get your thoughts. Johnny, how you doing, brother? Oh, I'm hanging in there, man. What's going on, bro? How are you feeling about the CJ Mosley restructure and what's your plan for the 10 pick now that we've seen Morgan Moses come here at right tackle? Does it change anything for you? So I think... The C.J. Mosley thing right then and there shows everybody that the locker room is still intact. Mm -hmm. It's been intact. We had all those rumblings of everybody saying, oh, Salah's lost the locker room, blah, blah. I think that puts it to bed because now you got two big-time players, Aaron Rodgers, now C.J. Mosley that went ahead and took a giant pay cut. If anything, that shows you they are leaders of men, right, and they're going to go and let their work do the talking for them. Now with the, I think we're in a great position, right? For what we're going to have, because I don't feel like we're put in a bind that we have to go an offensive tackle. Mm-hmm. I mean, I, sky's the limit at this point, right? Are they going to want to get somebody that's going to go ahead and be a weapon right now? Or are they going to really want to have somebody for the future? I think that's the conversations that they're having. Offensive tackle future, a Dunze neighbors, if they fall, right? Mm-hmm weapon right now that will go ahead even as, as crazy as it sounds and i don't want this but i'm a giant georgia fan right now that conversation with bowers just comes trickling in I and mean, it's like that girl that mm-hmm. you just can't shake off man just keeps coming yep. by hey by the way it's, it's, so i don't know man it's um i don't think we put in this is the reason why we were saying that free agency was such a big thing for us to go ahead mm-hmm. and um see what we're going to have, I mean, I, I, I trust JD. We haven't had somebody like this that can make things happen. I mean, the Mark, the, the Morgan Moses signing, I mean, it's huge, 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 you know, Simpson, same thing, man. We took two out of those five. I think they were ranked top five in line last year, right? Baltimore yep. have, and we took two out of the five there. That speaks volumes right there to you. Hope we re-sign McGovern. Mm-hmm. I think. That's uh, that's something that needs to be talked about, right? And hundred percent. I don't know what you think, man. Yeah, I would. I would resign McGovern. I love having both Simpson and Mo- Moses on this team. I think at the very least, you have Douglas, who has probably an ear still in the in the uh, Ravens locker room to some degree, and some friends in that organization from being there for so long. So I think there's some degree of like inherent. Uh, knowledge the same way Philadelphia knows Joe Douglas over here why they went for Bryce Huff they see the the win rate and like clearly Douglas likes him and you know we just couldn't hold on to him or anything but uh yeah look I I feel like the weapon at 10 Bowers is interesting wide receiver makes me feel a little bit more comfortable just because of how much money wide receivers are getting in the open market right now so if you could go premium position at a position of 
uh, need. I'm good with that. If you were to take Bowers at 10, it's an all-in move, and you're drafting someone that can get open quickly near the line of scrimmage, which I think is something that Rodgers would like. So I would endorse that as well. I'm just a little maybe lukewarm on it. Uh, I feel like if I could trade down, trade down's probably my number one option unless Alt winds up falling. And I'm fine with going tackle if they have to or, you know, wide receiver. And before you kick me out, I just wanted to say something. Two real quick things. The trade down scenario, I'm all for it. That's what I would love. Go down to Mm -hmm. 17 with Jacksonville Mm -hmm. and pick up that second. And then the second one is um, I'm on the same boat with my kids, man. My wife is like, free agency sucks. I hate it, so. Dude, peace out, man. <laughs> my my wife is getting so mad. She said, "So when does this free agency thing end?" I was like, "Well, it started Monday, and it kind of just goes on forever." <laughs> Johnny, <laughs> thank you so here. much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. All right, lots of fun, lots of fun. Oh, the outsider up said, "Why even have the chicken?" Ah, because you know what? I like talking to people, and I'd rather have them finish the conversation when I don't have anyone on the line. I got no one on the line right now. You want to call in? Pinned comment has the call-in number you can hop on with me. Let's go over here. We'll just talk a little bit more about uh, C.J. Mosley's restructuring of his contract. Two years, $17.25 million deal rips up the old contract. He has $13.25 million guaranteed. That includes $9 million fully guaranteed for the 2024 season. That means we are locking in C.J. Mosley for the next two years. But in the event things go horribly wrong with Aaron Rodgers and we need to pull the ripcord on this whole regime you can cut cj after the season with minimal dead cap because of this contract so there's a few different ways it could go if cj wants to hang it up at the end of the year if rogers i mean you probably wouldn't cut cj you'd probably allow him to retire if the rogers experiment didn't work out i would imagine this is probably his swan song here but two years cj mosley is a dude big fan of cj mosley um let's see We've got Freedom House in here saying, not one person made the argument to take Marvin after neighbors. Now you're making fake arguments so you can actually win one. No, what are you talking about? Someone, that's something in the chat, I guess. That's what I get for just clicking on random chat questions uh, or chat comments. Dakota says, getting Tyler Boyd would make me happy enough. Please make it happen. I would love to get Tyler Boyd. I still think he's going to the Steelers. That's my gut feeling on that. I think he wants to go home to Pittsburgh, and I think he wants to play for uh, Mike Tomlin. He's mentioned as much in in some videos. Uh, We've got Aaron on the line. Let's go over to Aaron to get his thoughts. Aaron, what's up, brother? How are you doing? I'm doing I'm hanging in there. How's free agency treating you? What do you want to do at 10? What do you think about the C.J. Mosley contract? What do you think about the Moses trade? Uh, I really like the C.J. Mosley extension because I feel like it gives us an opportunity to, like, get more players out of it. Um, Mm -hmm. Did you see Uzama got cut? I did. Yep. How do you feel? I feel like that opens the door for Bowers. I feel like it has to. It definitely, it it opens the door. I I don't know if it necessarily kicks it wide open, but last year we saw the Jets potentially have Michael Mayer high on their list, and they had Conklin, Ruckert, and Uzama on their roster already. So they were probably thinking, hey, we could move off of Uzama for another tight end anyway. Not to mention we heard the rumblings of the Jets wanting Jameer Gibbs. So I think they want a game breaker on that offensive side of the ball just in the event that a Garrett goes down or a Brees goes down. It gives you that third option to really blow the doors off teams. Right. I, I feel like people also forget that you look at Kittle. Kittle blocks a lot. Oh, like yeah. Bowers gives that opportunity to not only receive the ball, but block for us. The biggest issue with going tight end in the first is the evaluation process that NFL GMs have had on first round tight ends. Like a, a top tight end is absolutely worth a top 10 pick. If you give me a Kittle, a Laporta, a Kelsey or a Mark Andrews, the four tight ends that were in the final four teams of this year's playoff run, I would be tickled pink. Now, unfortunately, the evaluation process sucks, and everyone, for whatever reason, can't evaluate first-round talent tight ends. So there is some inherent risk in Bowers. You know, he's slightly undersized. He's not necessarily right. known for his blocking. But if he can give you, like, the ability to have a weapon get open really fast near the line of scrimmage, that almost neutralizes some of your O-line issues as well um, with Garrett getting open real quick and Brees getting open real quick out of the backfield. 
Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. I really like Lad McConkey too. That would be a oh, crazy. Oh, he's thing. awesome. That'd be, That's, that'd I, be Green crazy. Bean's high on him. I know a bunch of the guys in our group chat are, are, are like sounding off on him. It's just a matter of how you could get him. You got to trade yeah. down and get extra picks. And he might go at tail end of the first round with how explosive he's been this offseason. Um, I'm still penciling him in second round, I think, in all my mock drafts. But uh, is there something, would you endorse a trade down or are you like full on Bowers at 10 at this point? I don't know. I really like Guyton. I think, mm. but I don't know where he would, where do you think he falls? Do you I think, think he's a second round guy or do you think it's late first? I think he definitely goes in the first and I think teams are going to overdraft him because of his metrics. So I could see a situation <laughs> where let's say the uh, Bengals bring in Makai Becton on a prove it deal, but then draft a Tyler Guyton to be their heir apparent oh, after that. Uh, I could see something along those lines. I could see him in the twenties. Um, I don't think he gets out of the first round. I, that's just a gut feeling. Right. How do you think we handle free agency with wide receiver? I don't know. I kind of want to go a, a cheaper route, like a DJ Shark type receiver or a Curtis Samuel, and then go after a big time weapon in the draft. Like I prefer veteran offensive tackle. So if I could spend my money on a Tyron Smith, a Bakhtiari, I mean, heck, if you could get a, a Charles Leno Jr. Uh, from mm. Washington, that, he's easily the best tackle yeah. that's available right now. Um, that would be awesome. I just don't know if we've had any connection with him, especially given the uh, the Bakhtiari connection that we already have. Aaron, thank you so much for the call. Nice you have been ejected from the cockpit. Oh no, I just hung up. Uh, I had another caller on the line. I accidentally hung up on you. <laughs> uh, other caller, if you're on the line, uh, call back in. I'm sorry. I uh, I booted you by mistake. Uh, Ricky comes in says the Athletic says Pitt was favored over Kansas City for Boyd, but the Jets have emerged as a dark horse team to keep your eye on now. So I do think Pittsburgh is still going to be that same favorited team, and I would love to see the Jets in on Boyd if he's not going to go to Kansas City. That would be one of my top options for a remaining wide receiver at this point. James! What's up, brother? Ryan, you just answered... You, <laughs> I'm sorry to call back in. You literally just answered my question. So if we got Boyd... If, yes. <laughs> you know what I mean? I want Boyd, mm -hmm. I want Garrett, mm -hmm. I want Boyd, and then maybe uh, someone else trickle down through free agency, and then another. Mm -hmm. What do you think about Gibson, though, taking that next step? He's going through his first offseason program, right, mm -hmm. in that slot receiver position. I liked what I saw from Brownlee at the end of the year. Are mm -hmm. we forgetting about these guys a little bit? I don't want any part of Bowers. We mm -hmm. Offensive line, offensive line, offensive line. Aaron Rodgers will find a way to get the ball to receivers. If he has time, I feel like if we were to get a Boyd, I do think that kind of removes wide receiver from that top 10 pick. I think it does still kind of open the door for Bowers a little bit just because of a different position. Um, tackle, I like. If you were to go another route with a, a slot wide receiver, I like Malik Washington in the third or fourth round. Probably the fourth round okay. is where I would feel more comfortable with him. He's a mighty might type player, five foot nine, yeah, plays way bigger than his size. Um, and then I would still so go Gibson, offensive. Though, no? I like Gibson, but I don't really want to pencil him in as the starter. I'd rather him beat out a vet like a, a Curtis Samuel after this season or something along those lines. What I just don't want to. Brian, you wouldn't like Gibson in the four? <sighs> I mean, well, if he's going to be the slot, right? Like you want to have Garrett on the field at all times. You're probably going to have Lazard as one of your wide receivers realistically. And then <sighs> unless you want to bring in another like weapon if you get yeah. someone to knock lazard down you still need someone in the slot which means gibson would be starting even though you, you haven't penciled in as like a wide receiver four or whatever I, I i need someone to be that like cob replacement that has gibson be able to come in and be the gadget guy as opposed to maybe be the starter full-time i agree with you on that but what about so aaron loves to throw those tight ends where's rucker gonna go maybe he takes want, the next step so I really like Ruckert, and I feel like the Jets are probably going to keep Bauden. So I feel like Ruckert probably stays as tight end two. Right now, if we draft Bowers, then maybe he falls down to like a tight end three. But I like the idea of cutting Bauden, moving Ruckert to that H-back role, having him block in front of Brees Hall and keep a weapon on the field. Give us our best weapons on the field at all times with Ruckert, like Conklin. If it's a Bowers, it could be a Bowers. If it's not, then it's a Garrett Wilson and a wide receiver or you add another offensive tackle. I like keeping Ruckert on the field and you moving off Bauden, of Bauden. Though, I, I feel like he could do the same stuff mm. as Ruckert can, with the exception of he can't block in line. 
I think Rucker's got like maybe like you know 12, 15 pounds on him, so he could stay in line. Whereas Borden needs to be that H back position. But mm. I like the fact if we could put Rucker at the H back, have Conklin at that tight end, then I would be, you know, a little more willing to accept that Bowers fit because if if he comes in and does what everybody projects him to do, he's going to be a effing stud, like an absolute stud. Oh, 100%. And then Conklin's up for a contract after this year. So it might be one year, and then it's Bowers and Ruckert sitting there, and Conklin can go elsewhere, and he gets his, you know, maybe we get a comp yeah, pick for I'm him. Gonna if he, if, He's going to play for that new contract. For sure. I, either he balls out this year and gets a new contract that gets us a comp pick next year, or we, we restructure him, and maybe similar to, like, what I think they're going to do with DJ Reed is align all these contracts to be a two-year window with Rodgers. James, thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. You're out of here. All right, we've got Devin on the line again. Devin, how you doing, brother? I'm doing good. I kept hearing Brock Bowers, his name. It, it, it gets under my skin. I am not under any circumstances taking a tight end in the first round. Mm. No, that is bad juju. So is that a Bad value juju. perspective because good tight ends are normally found later or is it like, yes, is it, do you not like the prospect overall? Like what, like what's your feeling on Bowers? Like as, why you're so anti, you know, him in the first. Don't get me wrong. I love his skill set. Mm. He's not a blocker. Mm. He's not. There's, there's a guy you can get in the late third, early fourth by the name of Cade Stover out of Ohio state. A mm -hmm. couple inches taller. About 30 pounds heavier, mm. just as fast, just as solid. Ooh. I'm going to have to do a little bit of recon. I like the Ohio State guys with the Garrett Wilson connection, the Jeremy Ruckert connection. These guys like playing together. Listen, Cade, I'm an Ohio State fan, so I'm always going to root for my Ohio State guys to go do great things in the NFL. Mm. Cade was a linebacker his freshman and sophomore year. They converted mm. him to tight end. Ooh. So, yes, he's raw. High upside. But he understands how, yes, he understands how to read a defense. Mm. He's always getting open. He has the ability to pry balls from guys' hands. I've watched him do it countless times at Ohio State. Mm. And he's fast enough to take that deep go route down the center, which Aaron loves hitting. From a value perspective, I like receiver or tackle in the first round. Tight end does scare yes. me a little bit. Um I would understand if they did it based on where their draft board was last year with Mayer. Um, mm -hmm. But I would, I'm, I'm with you. I would prefer wide receiver. Given what wide receivers are getting on the open market right now, I would much rather sign someone that could save us $20 million a year <laughs> or something like that at wide receiver than a tight end that might be getting, you know, $12 million a year or $13 million a year. And all I got to say is we need to find a way to get Connor Beebe in the second round. He's so good. Him he plays center. so many different positions. Left tackle, right tackle, left guard, right yes. guard. It's just the flexibility is huge. I want Jordan Morgan first round in the 20s. Mm. BB second round. Find a way to get a third round pick, get Stover, mm. and then find a way to find an edge in the late part of the draft. And to me, I don't care if we only get four players in the entire draft. Mm. That would be the perfect draft for me. Yeah, get me four impact players that can that you yes. can build for for the next two years. That's how I want this. I want this window of time with Rodgers framed as a two year window, which maybe they were framing the whole draft pick of McDonald as a three year window. Maybe that's their their plan. They're like, hey, we don't have to worry about it. You know, we got Rodgers for three years. Let's get the guy that's going to replace off. And then uh, I don't know. We'll see. We'll Listen, see. I lo love McDonald's skill set. He's a bigger, faster huff. Devin, I love it. Get back to work. Listen, you're out of here. <laughs> Glad to have you, brother. Uh, all right, we've got Mutt Viles on the line. I just want to hop over to Red John's comment real quick. Thank you, Red John, for celebrating two months of membership to the Jets Talk 24-7 family. If you guys want to join the Jets Talk channel and want to support what I do here, uh, you get yourself some cool emojis. You can drop some J-E-T-S in the chat. And you get a, a free super chat as well. Uh, let's see. Brian Thomas Jr. is better than Odunze. Catches the ball with his hands, not body. He's the total uh, package. I'd take him at 10. Wouldn't even risk trying to drop back. I'm fine. If they want to make Brian Thomas Jr. the pick at 10, I'm good with that because of his size, because of his speed, because of the Jets' need at the wide receiver position. If you like him, pull the trigger. 
I do like Odunze. He's number one in contested catches, number one in deep ball catches as well. So I would be totally down with going that route uh, if he were there. Like, I'm, I'm fine either way. As far as better or worse, I don't know if I'm better on Thomas Jr. than Odunze, but it, it wouldn't surprise me if Brian Thomas Jr. was the best wide receiver from this class. I'll put it that way. All right. Mutt Viles is driving in the truck. So Mutt Viles, you're going to keep your eyes on the road, and you are going to talk to me from there. Mutt Viles, how you doing, brother? Of course, Ryan. You know I do that. Nah, I'm good. good. Man. I just saw the thumbnail. That's why I jumped right in. I was like, wait, what happened to CJ Mosley? I was <laughs> in the deal, station baby. like two and a half hours. I didn't see. Oh, yeah. Okay. So so basically what happened was they ripped up his old contract. They gave him a two-year deal worth $17.25 million. He's got $9 million guaranteed for this season, $13 million guaranteed across the two years. So it's basically aligning his contract for two seasons with Rodgers, but also giving us the flexibility to get out of his contract after this year's if Rodgers season implodes and this, the coaching staff, like, nukes itself. So what does cap it, though? Is it low? It's going to be lower. So if he's getting $9 million this year, I would imagine some of the cap hits pushed off to next year. He was at a $21 million cap hit before this deal, and then they just ripped it up. So I would imagine he's under $10 million for a cap hit now. I haven't seen the official numbers on what how it's structured. And if there's any void years, that could change how things go as well. Good, good. Give me a receiver. Like, I keep pounding the last three days. Give me a, give me a receiver. I don't care who it is. Give me Joe all to 10. Then do whatever you want at the end of that. That's all I want. So, I just want the left tackle. That's it. Do you, do you That's think all I want. Alt, do you think Alt goes seven to the Titans now that they signed Ridley, though? I feel like one offensive lineman's definitely coming off the board before us, and I have a hard time seeing it anyone other than Alt. I was talking to one of my coworkers about that, though. He thinks he might go to the Chargers. But so I'm like, why Chargers would he go there? Don't they have a tackle at – don't they have a, a, tight, a tackle anyway in Slater? So they do have a tackle in Slater. So I could see the Chargers going with Alt because of the connection with the D-line coach. He was saying that Alt was going to be a first-round pick all day. So if they feel good enough about Alt being a right tackle, they might go with that. Or they go with Fuaga or Latham at five. And then I think Alt goes seven to the Titans. And then the Jets are picking from left uh, left tackle Fashanu or right tackle Latham or Fuaga at 10. So I get the feeling I would prefer to trade down and go with a weapon. Um, or maybe Odunze winds up falling to us if uh, the Chargers wind up going with a weapon. I, I don't know. I'm fascinated to see who falls to us at 10. He kept asking me, though, do you want Bowers? Though? I kept telling him that, I'll, like I told you before, the only way I want Bowers is a receiver and a tackle already done. That's the only yeah. way I want him. I think That's we my can thing figure out that. receiver if we don't have one going into the draft. I think we'll can. I think we we'll find one in the third round, or I'd trade up a little bit to try and acquire one. But Bowers, Bowers does scare me a little bit from, like, the value perspective, for sure. Because you, I, could, I like the idea of a first-round pick being a $25 million wide receiver as opposed to, like, a $10 or $12 million tight end. But if you're trying to win now, then it doesn't necessarily matter. A cheap weapon's a cheap weapon across the board. Get the best guy to do it. Mutt Viles. You enjoy the rest of your day at work. You have been oh, well, later. You're out of here. from the cockpit. All right, we got King Lowski joining the show. Lowski, how you doing, brother? Ryan, my brother, Ryan, my brother, how you doing this morning, man? I'm hanging in there. I'm feeling a lot more confident with this move for Morgan Moses. Five and a half million dollars shores up our right tackle. How are you feeling about yeah. that? And what do you want to do at number 10 now? Okay, well, at number 10, man, I, I, I've been hearing a lot of this Brock Bauer stuff, man. Let, let's just let's just cut the chase, man. We just signed Kenny Uoboa, okay? We, we got Jeremy Rucker, all right? I don't see us going tight end, man. We need to shore up that offensive line, okay? That was our biggest Achilles heel last year. And we need to make sure that we have the death to make sure that these guys, it, barn injury, we have the requisite pieces in the run game, in the pass game, to keep Rodgers up and keep Brees moving. You know what I'm saying? At the end of the day, if we got to trade up to get Joe Walt, go ahead and trade up to get him. Okay? Ooh, like if that's it. the best, if that's the best available player, go get that offensive tackle. Okay? Mm -hmm. Because 
I understand we need another receiver. There's receivers out there in free agency. Okay. I understand we need other pieces as far as um the defense. We can take care of that. We got we got one of the best defensive staffs in the league, okay? Regardless of how the team looks, the defense is still elite, okay? All I want to do is get another receiver by uh, Garrett Wilson and shore up that offensive line. We got the best running back in the game, baby. Brees Hall is the best. He just wasn't utilized right. Make sure we get them big boys in front of him to maul guys like Simpson. I seen the I seen the game tape on Simpson. He's gonna maul guys in the run game. Okay, we need another mauler. All right, let's get these guys in the building. Get them signed today. I love the CJ sign. We got our field general back on defense. Okay, now let's make sure we get. A, a general on the offensive line, on the offensive line, okay. We already got the quarterback at general, all right. VP, all right. Now I know everybody don't like it. I don't like it neither. I want my quarterback to be strictly about football. But yes. hey, let's just play the game on the off season. VP, let's go, baby. Let's make the playoffs. <laughs> hey, but I, I love Aaron. But hey, Aaron, let's keep it all about football, baby. Mm. All right, Ryan. Hey, man. Let's get these big boys in here, man. We got to get these big boys in here. Let's get an offensive line like Detroit had and 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 Baltimore had, and let's go, baby. J E T S, just just just. Let's go. Lowski, I love the energy, brother. Thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Ah, always good, always good getting a call from the Lowski. All right. Let's see. I've got, uh, let's go for, we'll go 13 more minutes. We'll, we'll round this out right at a two hour live stream. So if you guys want to call in, I've got a few more minutes here. Recap and CJ Mosley signs a $17.25 million two year contract with 13.25 million guaranteed, 9 million of which is fully guaranteed for this season. So you're dropping his cap hit down dramatically from the $21 million cap hit that it was. He's got $13 million guaranteed over the course of the next two years, which means you could get out of the contract in 2025 should you want to. Or you hold on to him, and then you got him probably for, I don't know, what is it, $8 million? This is absolutely the move to make. I would love to see Douglas align more of our contracts to go in with this two-year window. John Franklin Myers, DJ Reed, Tyler Conklin. Those three players. Now, maybe you want to wait on Conklin until after the draft if you are a Bowers fan or something along those lines. But I like the idea of keeping Conklin, JFM, and DJ Reed here for this two-year window with Rodgers the same way they just did with CJ Mosley. If you go back and you look at my first mock-off season, I'll have to clip it. I said I want to align a two-year window with Rodgers. Tyrod Taylor, two-year window. John Simpson, two-year window. CJ Mosley now, two-year window. I'm loving it. All right, let's go over to Matt. Matt, how you doing, brother? Good, Ryan. How are you? Hanging in there. What are your feelings on the CJ Mosley restructure, and what do you think we do at 10 now that we've got Morgan Moses in the building? Um, so I love CJ. I, uh, I, I absolutely love him. I think he's a, a team player all around. I think he did this to stay with us and to, mm -hmm. you know, help that cap for sure. Um, uh, Moses, that... That made my day, man. I've been watching you and Matt through. I'm at work. I just went out to my car so I can call in for the first time. I I've been waiting. It. You know, I'm I'm sitting around, man. I've been waiting, and you know, I I think that that does put so much less pressure on us in the draft. Mm -hmm. um, I'm I'm the one who said trade down um, earlier, and I was thinking um, Thomas Jr. Brian Thomas Jr. Um, Did I, you I didn't know that much. I put out last night. <laughs> Yeah, well, I didn't know much about him until you mentioned him, and so I started reading up on him. And I'm a bit, oh, I'm a big fan. I was wrong on the height. I thought he was six five. He's yeah. six three. So, I, so I'm two inches off on the height, but I love the player. I'm a big fan of the player. Yeah, he plays like he's six five. Watching him play, he's a he's a big man. Oh yeah, and the speed five uh, four three three forty blazing. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I'm, I'm a big fan too. To what Garrett I, Wilson is too. Like, get us a yes. bigger style receiver. 
Yeah, and and I think people are forgetting. I, I know not everyone's loving Tyrod Taylor, but he is such an improvement. So even if Rodgers doesn't play every game, we still have a, a competent quarterback that can get the ball to, you know, to anyone we have. And Brees being a year, another year past his injury, uh, it's just going to be dynamic. And I, I'm not banking that Rodgers is going to get hurt or that he's going to play the whole season, but – uh, I'm so much more confident with the the you know the little that we've done so far is huge for Jets fans. Yeah, Tyrod Taylor is the perfect backup quarterback. Him being the backup does make me interested into what their succession plan could potentially be. Like, is there a player that they're looking at at uh, quarterback that aligns maybe more with a Tyrod Taylor style of play that they could have those two learn from one another? in the background behind Aaron Rodgers while Aaron Rodgers is trying to win us a ring. Is there a quarterback that you see as a quarterback three? Do you want to carry a quarterback three at all? Like, would you go draft a quarterback at some point this year? Um, I think the only one that I'd be confident in is I, I think it's Rattler. Yeah. Um, I, like I, I didn't, I haven't just, yeah, I haven't done much research on anyone else, but you had mentioned him in one of your calls too. So I've paid m more attention to him. But yeah, I haven't done much with quarterback processing with this. Mm -hmm. I'd, I'd, I'd love a tackle. I still think we also forget about Carter Warren. Mm -hmm. I think he's going to be him. very dynamic for us. Um, so I, we're in a great shape. I, I really think we're in great shape right now. But I agree, weapon and tackle, first two picks, get us in the second, and we are going to be dynamic. I love it, Matt. You've been ejected from the cockpit. Matt, thank you so much for your call. Boys and girls, I'm going to keep this going for, we've got nine more minutes, eight minutes, eight minutes right now. I'll talk to some of you guys in the chat, see what you guys are talking about. If you guys want to call in, you're more than welcome to. Pinned comment. Happy Tanking says, we don't want Bowers, Jason Morrow flashbacks. Man, that would be scary. I don't want to get Jason Morrow at the 10th overall pick. I'd be really frustrated. The Freedom House says damn you can look at somebody's hairline and know if they're on steroids you're good i uh, i am not on steroids <laughs> if that's what you're talking about i'm not that big 180 pounds soaking wet sean says none of these guys in the tight end room have the skill set of brock bowers in my opinion brock bowers is a game breaker with his speed the speed is electric and if you're looking at the Jets wanting a Jameer Gibbs or wanting a Michael Mayer, it tells me they want some type of explosive playmaker. Whether it's Bowers or another wide receiver, I do think that could be the direction they end up going at 10, unless they have a particular tackle that they like that falls to them at number 10. And I would love to see it be Joe Alt, obviously. Um, let's see here. Did my mouse just die on me? What the heck? I'm trying to like click on our next caller. We've got Flexico calling in all right mouse there we go now my mouse is moving all right so let's go over to flexco how you doing brother how you feeling man, about our free agency period right. so far say that one more time how are you feeling about our free agency period so far hey man it's looking like we trying to do something with that offensive line which is the most important thing they got to get going oh, but yeah. what i feel they got to make a move on Mike Williams, man. They got to figure that one out. You think that's the receiver like, we want? Yeah, I feel like that, that. the Jets couldn't get open last year, man. Like, they had a couple people that could change the game, but if you focus on them and nobody else can get open, then it don't even matter if your line is protecting. You could be protecting for a while, and then it's mm -hmm. you just So what's your, what's your plan at 10? Is your plan the you want – you know, Mike Williams in free agency tackle at 10, or like if we don't get the weapon, like let's say we move into the draft with what we currently have right now. And then there's the shot that you get a Bakhtiari, or maybe we have a Bakhtiari just before the draft or something. Are you weapon at 10 or are you O-line at 10 or trade down? And you know, what would you do at that? Well, point? If you can, if you can get the, the offensive tackle that you believe is the best one on the board, then you draft mm -hmm. that one at 10. Mm -hmm. If that's not available, I wouldn't be against getting Bowers, man. Mm -hmm. If he's a, if he if he can change the game like how some of these tight ends is changing the game, then you can't go wrong there because 
That's a tough position to guard, and it's a mismatch every every time. You 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 having a hard time on defense trying to line up with that. Then you got Garrett Wilson and Brees to think about. But it's it's important that you work on that offensive line. If they get Bakhtiari, then that allows you to get a developmental offensive lineman later on in the draft. And if you get Mike Williams, you could do the same thing at wide receiver. You go, you basically mm-hmm. like y'all been saying the whole time. You focus all on the offense in this draft because y'all able to find defensive players. People want to come play defense for y'all because they know the defense is going to bring it every time. So they want to go make a name for themselves along with the Jets defense. You just got to get players that's going to be dogs on offense and that actually won it and that's going to fight for extra yards and that's going to fight to get open because mm-hmm. we don't got none of that and we don't got nobody on our offensive trenches that's putting in that work everybody mm-hmm. getting pushed around we need some alphas on on that offense and i think mike I like williams got team mean nasties and simpson and moses right now i am happy with those two signings i feel like they bring like a, a grittiness to the offensive line and a violence to the offensive line now if you get your offensive tackle at 10 you know, maybe that's a Fuwaga who's going to be the heir apparent to Mo- Moses or Moses is a backup at that point. If Olu falls here and you have Olu on the left-hand side pass blocking and you got Moses on the right-hand side run blocking with AVT, I'm feeling pretty good. I'm feeling a lot more confident after, you know, the last two days of moves by the Jets. Yeah, and you're not even going to need as much time as you needed with Zach Wilson because Aaron Rodgers will get rid of the ball quicker. So mm-hmm. just get some people that's going to, push people around for enough time to give us some time and we need people that's going to get open. So it, it, it all goes together. It's a lot of work that got to be done on offense and it's tough to pick one. You, you, you got to pick everything and just make something happen, man. I love it. Flex go. Thank you so much for the call. You have been ejected from the cockpit. All right. We're going to go over to Anthony. Anthony is on the line. Anthony, how you doing, brother? Hey, what's going on, Ryan? How are you, brother? Hanging in there. How are you feeling about our free agency period so far? Not bad, not bad. Excuse the camera screen. That's all right. Cracked. I'm actually working. I'm tri- driving in the city right now. Yeah, it's all good. Keep your eyes on the road. You just got to talk to me. So what, how are you <laughs> feeling about free agency? Gotcha. How are you feeling about the Morgan Moses trade yesterday? Uh, I figured they'd go, you know, they're not going to have any big splash moves. I like the Morgan Moses move. We should have never got rid of him, you know, after mm-hmm. that 2021 season. He was really good for us. Um, not a lot of people are saying this. I mean, I've heard it before, but I think we should still be going after T. Higgins, too. Man, I that would be a hell of a play. What do you think you got to give up to get him? I don't love giving up, like, a first-round pick or a future okay. first. Yeah, I don't think anything from this year. I would say maybe, maybe like, a third – or fourth this year, and then like a second round pick next year. That would be interesting. And then, it, and then it's a big contract. You're probably yeah, looking at what Ridley got. It. You got to think he's get Higgins is going to probably get four years, hundred million, realistically. Yeah, I think that's what I'm thinking. Somewhere around there, like twenty five mm-hmm. a year, twenty six a year. Mm-hmm. But I mean, you could do one of those things where you know you give the two years void, so it really might only really be a two year contract. Yeah. This window with Aaron Rodgers, but. Yeah, That's let him I'm walk thinking, and hit a hit a big contract after that too. He... Yeah, I mean, I don't know if if we actually retain him, but uh, he's what 25, 26. I think he's twenty five, so he might be open to like a two year deal, and then you know, as long as it's high guaranteed money, he could cash in again yeah. if he feels like he would benefit from Rogers being here, have some great stats, yeah, and then. then he you know, go another direction. I guess it depends how much guaranteed money exactly. he could get from a longer term deal elsewhere. Yeah, Cause I otherwise like he's, he'll just play on the franchise tag, that. right? If he's not getting the deal he wants. Yeah, I think I, I don't see him in Cincinnati. I just don't see it. Even if he, yeah, I, I think they'd have it. to get something yeah, valuable gonna... for him this year. They're still trying to win a super bowl. And I've, I would be a little surprised if they moved off of Higgins, like, without getting like an impact thing this year. Now, if they wanted to trade up to number 10 and we could fall back from 10 to 18 and get T Higgins in that trade down, I'm down for that. They don't have to give us another pick then. I'll take, you know, the best offensive tackle in 18 and I'd be, you know, happier than a pig and shit. That's what I'm saying. If we have the weapons, Rogers doesn't need as much time in the pocket, you know, and just get a decent line, you know, get a decent left tackle, Batiari has insurance, but we don't need like any like 
we don't need to spend 13, 14 mil on a, on a left tackle. I just don't feel like. Ooh, interesting. Interesting. Let's Anthony, thank you so much for the call. Enjoy your commute to work. You have been ejected <laughs> from the car. Get out of here. All right. I'm going to go through these last few calls here and then, uh, I'm not going to be taking any more. I'm going to hop off, but we're going to go to Joe, Julio, and then AJ. You guys are going to be my last three callers here. Joe, how you doing today, brother? I'm good, man. Good again. How you doing? <laughs> Hanging in there. What are any any additional thoughts on how free agency has gone? CJ Mosley restructuring his contract. What do you want to do? Um, I don't think we should get a weapon. I don't at all. Ooh, okay. uh, receiver wise. At all. Stock up O line, or are you are you saying in free agency? No uh, weapon? Yeah, free agency, no weapon. I mean, I don't really necessarily know what we should do next, but I think that going out and paying a receiver ten to fourteen million dollars a year mm-hmm. and overpaying a crap ton is not worth it. You got to remember, Zach Wilson is a terrible quarterback. Aaron Rodgers is elite. Who has Aaron Rodgers made better in his career? Jordy Nelson, mm-hmm. Devontae Adams, mm-hmm. elite quarterbacks make decent receivers look better Mm -hmm. overpaying for somebody that isn't worth it to make them look elite is just makes no sense to me yeah i don't like wide receiver i don't i don't like the wide receiver market in free agency right now i'm not a fan boyd is probably going to get like 15 million dollars a year and i don't know if i necessarily want to spend that much on a receiver like i'd rather a high-end guy uh on a cheap contract like a dj shark who's like hey you know i feel like i could benefit from being with rogers to parlay that into a good contract next year i'll sign a one-year cheap contract i'd prefer that route and spend more money on the offensive line yep or just keep it you never know what's going to be coming available about the deadline keep it have it in reserve if we don't use it it rolls over to next year great that means more money next year to build what we have already Mm -hmm. why spend it on somebody that we're hoping for that plans out and doesn't and then you've got another alan lazard on the team we That's can't afford another Alan Lazard. Touch. Yeah, I'm, I'm hoping Alan Lazard has a really big bounce back here. But the fact that Rodgers is saying like, hey, you know, we need to add another receiver doesn't necessarily have to be a, a high priced receiver. It could be the draft route. No. Do you like drafting a receiver at 10 or would you? No. Fall you back 12 or 13, drop back Bauer, or Brock Bowers. I want Bowers. Ooh. Bowers I'll... is going to be there, I think, at maybe 12. If you can get a trade up for the McCarthy or whatever his name is, JJ, the quarterback or whatever, yep. if he's there. You trade back two slots, you might get your second, and then you get your Brock Bowers. How about this? Denver comes knocking. They want JJ at 10. They have to leapfrog the Vikings. Hey, Denver, you got to give us Garrett Bowles, your left tackle. Boom, you plug him in. You slide down the two slots. They save $16 million. We get our left tackle, and then we wind up drafting Bowers at 12. Or what about Sutton? I would be down with Sutton. If you could trade down for Sutton, that's the one I really want. I've wanted Sutton for the longest time. So yeah, <laughs> I trade would be, down for Sutton, get your yep. wide receiver two and Bowers. Yup. 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 I'd be down for that. Or if you'd want to take your tackle at that point and have Sutton, I, do you think Bakhtiari is going to be the tackle real quick before I eject you? I, I think so. My, my biggest thing is, is I'm not worried about tackle at this point. I just want Bowers. Cause look at Gronk. Look at Gronk mm. and what he did with Brady. I want a Bowers because no matter how good your off receivers are around you or how, how bad you are, the tight end's always going to get open if they're good enough. And 100%. Then you're and they're Gronk the quarterback's best friend. God forbid Rodgers yep. goes down. It's nice to have a little security blanket there. Joe, yep. thank you so much for the but call. Hey, thank you. You have been ejected from the cockpit. You're out of here. All right, let's go over to Julio. Julio, how you doing, brother? What's up, Ryan? How you been? I'm all right. I'm feeling pretty good now that we got Morgan Moses in the fold. What are your feelings Me on number too. 10? I'm, I'm, number 10, I feel like we're going to trade it. Ooh, I like that. I like that. Down or up? I think we're going to trade for a player. Ooh, okay. So you're saying like maybe like a Brandon Ayuk or something like that? Uh, Yeah. I think the Raiders. Because, you know, Raiders looking for that quarterback. So you think they want Devonte Adams in the trade? We sneak him over yes. here. They want to go up for yes. Jaden Daniels. You know, maybe there's some sort I of pick flop. I think it's going to be Devonte Adams. Ooh, I like that. I would be on board with Devonte Adams given his contract. You make it more of a two-year deal as opposed to a one-year contract. Mm-hmm. I'd be down. And that's just the reunion, Ryan. That's just the reunion. You know, I just came from Dominican Republic and I first got mm-hmm. in the video to see you because I can't see you that good over there in Dominican Republic. <laughs> and I told you, 
the last time when we talked, I was going to mm-hmm. have a Don Julio for you. No. <laughs> That's awesome. There you go. <laughs> I got it. That's awesome. And let me tell you, I feel like Devontae's coming. Mm. Like, yeah, it feels feel like, like a foregone conclusion. Coming. Do you think Bakhtiari is going to be the tackle too? Like, you think that's. Yes. Oh, mm. yes. Oh, yes. Just going all in on Aaron Rodgers. He's ga- he's giving yes. back the money, get the guys he wants and make them happy and fill in mm. everyone else around him. There's one person I don't want to see him come back, but I feel like they're going to bring him back because nobody want him. Mm-hmm. And since we lost Whitehead, you know. Do you not want you know, Davis back? Not, huh? You don't want Ashton Davis back? I want Ashton Davis, but I feel like they're going to bring somebody else that we don't like. Oh, at safety specifically? Yeah, at safety because he played better I wish we got Poyer. Poyer signed for what, one year, $2 million down in Miami? That killed me. It's like, oh, yeah. that would have been nice. Yeah. And so I, I feel like this year is going to be our year. I feel like Buffalo's going trending down. I feel mm-hmm. like, you know, um, Miami, they lost a couple of great players. Oh, yeah. That I no Christian like Wilkins, the they did get Shaq Barrett, so it's still going to be aggressive yeah. in the middle. But I'm definitely more confident in where the Jets are trending than where the Bills or Dolphins are trending. I definitely think the AFC East is going to be our easiest path to the playoffs next year. Yes. And then the Dawkins thing got me so mad because he started talking so much trash when he got released, and then he go right back to them. Oh, dude, I hope we ragdoll his ass when we see him next year. Julio, thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit. All right, we've got AJ joining the show. AJ, how you doing, brother? Hey, I'm doing good, man. How are you? I'm hanging in there. I'm feeling good about Morgan Moses. I'm feeling good about the CJ restructure. What is your plan now that we have Moses with the rest of free agency? And what do you do with that 10 pick? Absolutely. I mean, I think you just hit the nail on the head with Julio a little bit. I think we're the only team in the AFC East that's improved this off season. I think the bills have lost some major talent. I think that the dolphins have tried to cheap out on some of their stars because they have extensions with guys like Jalen Waddle coming up. And I Mm -hmm. think that that opens the door even more for us to potentially really go all in this season. And for me, that plan, I think we have four of our five offensive linemen nailed down. If Mm -hmm. I was the general manager, the move I'm making, I'm calling Tyron Smith. We just Mm -hmm. cleared up the money, extend Mm -hmm. DJ Reed, clear up even more money. All Mm -hmm. of a sudden, the, the five starting offensive linemen are all above average at their position when healthy. And I get Tyron Smith has not played a complete season since 2015. Another thing I look at, he's never missed a playoff game in his career. He's there when it matters most. He really cares to be on the field. And then all of a sudden, it opens up the option at 10 to potentially go with a weapon, whether if one of those top three wide receivers falls there or Brock Bowers, whoever this front office has fallen in love with. But to me, that seems to be the plan all along, whether it be Smith or Bakhtiari. I think the Jets are sneakily looking at potentially adding a a weapon alongside Garrett Wilson in the draft. 100%. I like weapon in the first round a lot. And receiver, like Odunze is probably my number one option if he falls. Bowers is an intriguing one. It's a little scary, I'm not going to lie. But I love the idea of trading down. Would you be more for weapon at 10 or trade down and then try to get a weapon at wherever that is? Because you may not get Bowers at that point then. I think it really depends on what we do in free agency. If we do go with a Tyron Smith, a big name like that, then it also depends on how the board plays out. If a guy like Odunze or somehow Malik Neighbors were to make it to 10, I think you run in the card. But Mm. realistically, I don't think either of them make it just with the way everything's shaping up. I think the Bears go wide out. I think that the Chargers, if they don't move down with a team like Minnesota – They go wide out, and then there's just other teams in the mix where I feel like all three are going to be gone before that Jets pick. Fingers crossed, 
Mm -hmm. One makes it to 10, but if no one's there, I have no problem moving down with a team like the Colts to 15, rehashing Mm -hmm. a second round pick and then evaluating from there. If you want to go weapon, if a guy like Brock Bowers is still there, so be it. If not, if you're worried about the injury history, sure up your left tackle of the future, Mm -hmm. bring in a guy like Latham or a guy like Olu. Someone will be there at 15. Let him sit behind the left tackle as a little bit of an injury aid if need be. Let him battle in camp. And I feel like it's, there's a no lose situation if our money goes to tackle in the off season. There's a lot of potential losses if we go out and spend money on wide receiver here in the coming days. AJ, you hit the nail on the head right there, brother. Thank you so much for the call. You've been ejected from the cockpit, boys and girls. CJ Mosley has redone his deal. He now is on a two-year, $17.25 million contract with $13.25 million guaranteed, which means we are locking him in for a two-year window with the option to be able to pull the plug if need be after this season. God forbid everything goes south and Rodgers implodes and nothing goes the way we want and a new regime's out, but he's getting $9 million guaranteed for this year and then $13 million total over the course of the next two. So lots of potential options for the New York Jets, now that CJ has redone this. I love getting our field general back. I said this back in November when we wanted to align all our contracts in that two-year window. I would say Brock, ba- or not Brock Bauer, sorry. I would say Tyler Conklin, JFM, DJ Reed, get those guys locked in on two-year deals as well to complement Morstead and Zerline and Mosley's contracts. That's what I want to see. Lock in the two-year window. Boys and girls, let me know your thoughts of the CJ Mosley deal down below in the comment section. What is your move for the rest of the offseason? What's the next free agent you want to see? Where do you go with the number 10 overall pick now that the Jets have a CJ Mosley restructure and a Morgan Moses addition to the right hand side? Do you want to see Bakhtiari? Do you want to see Tyron Smith come in? Let me know in the comment section down below. But this is Jets Talk signing off. J E T S.